Obviously, one of the things with having a public P.O. box is that occasionally, or most of the time, you get a package that you have no idea what the heck it actually is. And one such time, the package came with a note. This one from Caius Diamond 109 on Discord reads, Welcome! I've been meaning to send these out to you for a while now, but I haven't gotten around to it. There's a lot to like about the Roto track, and I'd like to see your thoughts about it. I'm not sure if you have any of these yet from the Curator's Collection, but here's some anyway. I'd love to see the return of Tag Back sometime, as it was the only real series that looked at vintage blasters in a modern setting. And this is awesome, because not only did Clarence send me a Roto track, a blaster I do have, however, I have never found a track for, and of course, getting a vintage Mega Darts is quite a difficult proposition. So it's time for the return of Tag Back, Caius, because you get the entire month of it. 25 Tag Back videos. That is surely going to kill me. And this time, it's the Nerf Cyber Strike Roto Track. For the virtual try reality with Nerf. This is Nerf Roto Track. Wanna talk firepower? This is higher power. Crank the barrel handle back and start a pummeling 12 dart attack. Now you're delivering 12 darts to go. Roto Track, each sold separately. Extra ammo sold separately. Nerf or nothing. Ah, <sighs> 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 see, I, I love vintage packaging. It even has a... I don't know what sticker that is, but it's a $15 sticker that somebody paid for this back in 1997. Part of the Cyber Strike line, the Roto Track is a blaster that you wear. It has a chain on it, and you slam fire it. And honestly, looking at this, why doesn't Nerf make cool stuff like this anymore? Everybody tries to go, like, of course, Nerf can't compete with the likes of Dart Zone or Busby. That they really just seem like they can't compete with any of their freaking competitors on basically any front. Price, performance, quality. So they make gimmicks like the Elite 2.0 Flip Series. When they could just be making cool stuff like this. That honestly, I'm all about. Prepare yourself for the ultimate transformation with Nerf Cyber Strike gear. It's got an armored plate that rises to load an ammo belt. It's a pump action auto rotate belt and rapid fire darts. Adjustable strap makes your blaster an extension of your arm. Three belt sections linked to deliver an incredible 12 dart assault. And also shows off the strong arm, the Defender T3 and the Perceptor. Uh, the Perceptor I actually have on box right here. Might be out of frame. And uh, we've covered the strong arm and the Defender T3 on this show previously. And I get a whole three nerf points for this one. You should, you should bring that one back, Hasbro. And this is the Roto Track. And you might already be able to figure out like why this blaster specifically is I mean, you actually might find these blasters all over the place, but usually what you don't find with them is the chains. These are not very durable as the ones that this one came with are not in great condition. And of course, it's a vintage mega blaster. That's not to mean that there's any kind of system in here that wouldn't prevent you from shoving literally anything in these chains and firing it as long as it would make a seal, but it is a vintage mega dart shooter and uh, Caius was very generous in including a couple of vintage mega darts. I, I just noticed the new sticker on there. That's hilarious. Um, these ones don't have dart heads, but they have glue. And then, yeah, that's that's more than enough to get an idea of what the Roto Track does. Now, it should be pointed out that obviously this blaster is older than virtually everybody who's going to be watching this video. So, if it performs bad, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. But I can say that it does in fact fit, and it is in fact an extension of my arm. It's actually quite comfortable. Huh. It's not something that you could very easily have as a secondary. You very much mean to have this blaster on you because obviously it has like a big grip here and a chain and everything like that, but it's not bad. And of course, if you had more of the chain, you could just have a longer chain. And this rotation mechanism is very stout. If you really wanted to, I don't see what would stop you from having double or triple the chain, except for space and money. And we don't talk about these a whole lot, but these are the original Mega Dart. You see, Nerf having a variety of ammunition isn't exactly a new thing. That's the entirety of Nerf from very much the beginning. Different lengths of arrows, different sizes of darts, different sizes of balls, and of course, we got the Mega Dart right here, which is a completely different dart than the Mega Dart that we've known and love, and of course, Mega XL. 
guards still seal at the very back of the chain. And then this is your priming handle right here. So it's kind of meant for you to hold the blaster up like this, pull that back, and there is no trigger. So pull all the way back, push it all the way forward. It's going to fire a dart. And of course, load the chain. You just pull that up. It pops up, grab your chain. It's a very simple rotation mechanism. Pop it back on there. So pull that back and it rotates the wrong way. I mean, it rotates the right way. I loaded it the wrong way. Pull that back. Oh, that actually wasn't half bad. That's actually pretty reasonable. It's uh, hard to say if this is a stock blaster or not. It could be modified, but as you would imagine, that's a lot of fun. Apparently this retailed at $20 back in the day, which adjusted for inflation is probably a lot more than it should be, but it's a nice, solid, fun blaster. Now with the priming handle locked only being on the right side of the blaster, it's a little difficult for you to use left-handed. I'm not saying you can't, but I honestly wouldn't want to try to run the blaster like this, so it's probably best that this one be anchored on your left arm and you prime with your right. And the actual design of the blaster, all they really would have to do is take this exact same thing, bring it up to elite standard, and just have this uh, priming grip able to kind of flip between left and right, maybe some kind of locking mechanism where it will rotate, and this would be an instant seller. I'm not even joking. How many of you would love to have some kind of secondary, especially if this was something that folded up and then you had it on your arm and you could like press a button to have the grip flip down, grab it and just start rattling off shots with it that were elite standard? Doesn't need to have great performance. It's kind of like a tertiary last ditch blaster that you could wear on your body, which is something a lot of companies aren't really doing. None of your competitors are really doing that, Hasbro. You already did it. Well, Kenner did it with the Nerf brand back in the day. Why don't you jump on that kind of stuff? Why don't you go back to where you were? I'm actually starting to think that a lot of these videos are gonna be me trying to rationalize what Hasbro has been doing for the last three, four years when they really just need to go back. I mean, they did the Icons line, right? Icons line could have had cool stuff like this and it don't. Now, obviously using one of these things in the present, you could of course rebarrel the chains to have tighter fit for elite or short darts. Chains could actually have reloading, which would be extremely efficient. And I'm sure you could 3D print chains. These ones are, uh, they don't last very long and they're held together by little plastic. Uh, I'm worried about trying to separate it now that I've put it together, but the chains are in three link sections and they're just kind of held on with this rubbery plastic tab stuff. If it being a chain blaster means that you could technically have almost unlimited chain and rattle off shots with it and only fed the chain through one side. And maybe if you had either a spare hand to delink it yourself or some kind of delinking mechanism, it means you could have virtually unlimited capacity and non-stop firing. So I could very much see somebody taking one of these things, bring it up to a 10, doing the best they can with it, strapping it to their arm and dominating an HVZ with it. It's a very satisfying mechanism and I'm a big fan to finally have a chance to fire a roto track. And this is the kind of the reason why I love Nerf so much. And I can't thank Caius enough for sending this off to me with the box, because I already planned on redoing some sections back there. And this will look absolutely flawless somewhere behind me. A very thoughtful gift, and I'm very humbled by it. Thank you very much, Clarence. But that's what I have for the 1997 Nerf. You know, there actually are fans of Busby toys out there, specifically their blasters, because back in the day, Busby had bite. Busby wasn't just trying to coexist with Nerf, they outright wanted to surpass them. This is where I'd insert the clip of, I, I don't remember, maybe it was Blaster Hub did an interview with a person at like Toy Fair for that was representing Busby toys. And Busby Toys was like, we're not gonna just keep up with Nerf, we're going to surpass them. But I don't have that clip, so just use your imagination. Nowadays, over the last couple of years, that kinda seems like a joke because Busby really hasn't had a great hit on their hands in a very long time. And I believe this has something to do with the fact that they moved away from their partner company, Alex Brands, which may have like reined them in. I'm not certain, but they kinda stopped producing blasters, new ones for a while, and not putting them on shelves in the US. And then when they came back, we got the, uh, Trigger fire, Tetra shot, 
the Thundershot, none of which are really compelling blasters <sighs> at even really compelling price points in my opinion. But this wasn't always the case, because this is Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it could offer us today in the present, and this time, we're taking a look at the 2015 Busby Brute. Yeah. Now, you have to excuse the uh, tiny magazine. My Brute doesn't really seem like it's feeling all that well today, and I couldn't find one of the obnoxiously long, like, 20 dart mags that this thing came with. But this is a $20 full-auto flywheel blaster. 2015. You know what else came out that year? Say the line, Bart. The Sentinel. Yeah! I got one. You probably can't see it because of the glare, but I got one. That's how you know this was pretty good. In terms of overall design, the Busby Brute has that same kind of uh, drunkenly doodled aesthetic of somebody who thinks they know what a space blaster looks like. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's okay. It's not my. It's the silhouette's fine, but of course the greebling is. Kind of awful. Uh, Busby's never really had a great track record for making attractive looking blasters, in my opinion. But what really kind of kills this for me is that it looks pretty good on this side of the shell. You can kind of see a problem here. That is, uh, I believe, where the pusher is located, and that's, uh, that's pretty ugly. But looks aren't everything, because this blaster does perform. Before we get too far into things though, we have to compare it to its obvious nerf counterpart, the far more attractive looking. This is that one that Jake gave me that has all the paint on it. I, I, I still have this Rapid Strike. Full nerf full auto companion, the Rapid Strike. And yeah, I mean, you can collapse this all the way down and they're still about the same, but yeah, it's uh, interesting to see. About the same amount of stuff, just less heart and soul went into this one for like half the price. And if that wasn't spicy enough, it's actually compatible with the Nerf mags. Which was kind of an important thing that happened at the time because not having cross compatible mags was a big deal. And this really, really helped make Busby a far more attractive option. Absolutely tiny main grip. Though I can grab it because I got tiny hands. The foregrip is, it's okay. It's not horrible. The stock is short, but it works. Batteries are located in the stock. It's powered by four AA batteries. There are no rails. There are no jam doors. There's practically nothing. And then there's this button mag release. Is this the one that you can kind of like push forward? Yeah, it is. You don't have to actually push it in. You can just kind of rock it forward like a, like a Nerf mag release. And of course, single trigger operation. Pull the trigger slowly to rev. Pretty good rev from an old blaster on four double A's, way more powerful than Nerf. And then pull the trigger all the way for full auto action. All right, well, that may not be the greatest rate of fire ever, but it is a rate of fire and it does technically work. So we can give the Brute some pretty decent consideration for the fact. It feels like a much smaller blaster. It, it, it honestly doesn't, even though it's like the same length, it doesn't feel as massive or as intimidating as the Rapid Strike. And for such a low price, this blaster was an amazing opportunity for a lot of people to get into flywheel blasters, especially pretty good ones. It performed about the same exact thing as the Rapid Strike, maybe arguably a little bit better on that rate of fire because the Rapid Strike rate of fire is Garbo, and it was totally functional for a $20 full auto blaster. This was supplanted by the Cyclonic, which was a far less attractive blaster in my opinion, although it still very much did work and was basically the same price. Nowadays, of course, you can find 3D printed cages to increase the power of your Brute. You can rewire it for a LiPo. I'm not sure how good that pusher mechanism is because I don't think anybody's really modded one of these things in the last, since it came out. And if you're one of those people that was looking to like make some kind of full auto mag fed SMG pistol looking thing, Cutting one of these things down would hurt significantly less than cutting down a rapid strike. And yeah, there was a time when Busby was stupidly good as a company. Nowadays, they're 
kind of a joke and it hurts because while I do appreciate them making some new innovative designs, the designs don't seem to have a lot of heart and soul in them. They seem pretty boneless in my opinion. I, I don't know what's going on with them, but it wasn't always that way. And that's why when you see a person who loves Busby, they probably more or less love how Busby was, where you could get a really competent blaster for a real low price. So Legacy, yes, the Busby Burt was actually pretty freaking cool because it was a budget rapid strike that you could pick up that arguably performed a little bit better. And nowadays, if you really want to run a Busby Brute, well, of course you can 3D print a cage or get a 3D printed cage, slap in some better motors, slap in some bigger flywheels, powered by a LiPo, and there you go. You got a full auto, probably not the fastest rate of fire thing ever, but I'm sure this thing can still hit anywhere from 150 to 180 like most flywheel blasters do. So if you really want to prank your friends at your next Nerf war, consider rewiring and upgrading a Busby Brute to a LiPo because they'll never see it coming. And Busby, I'm just disappointed in you. I'm not angry. I, I'm a little angry that you put out the crap that you did last summer, but I'm, I'm still hopeful that you'll soar back into existence with some good stuff like uh, more of this and more of the Sentinel. That being said, I do have their compound bow thing that I found at Ross for 15 bucks. And it's really good and I need to finish the review on that. But I'm Volcoma7 and that's all I've got for you on this one. This is the... It's day three in our month of Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it could offer us today in the present. And this time! Kind of a special blaster. It's a blaster with a funny name. It's a blaster with a legacy. And its legacy is that it might actually be Nerf's first official video game tie-in blaster. I mean... What could possibly go wrong? So for this one, we're taking it off the wall. The 1994 Nerf Balzuka, a name that will never not be funny. Rotating barrel blasts up to 15 balls, 10 balls included. Uh, would you look at that? Uh, Nerf's been cheaping people out for quite a long time. I guess it wasn't hyper. That was the first thing to not come with enough balls. It does not come with balls, Goodwill wrote on the box, and that's fine, I've got like a whole two of them. I need more ballistic balls. The ultimate in barrel blasting action. Bazooka's rotating barrel blasts up to 15 balls that rain down on targets in rapid fire succession. 10 balls included, ballistic balls refill back sold separately. One, load two balls in each barrel. Each barrel will hold up to three balls. Extra balls are sold separately. Two, pull handle all the way back to fire. Quickly push all the way forward as hard as you can. You can break these things. I know because the last one I had was broken because of people who broke it. So be gentle. And it says stock up with these nerf heavy hitters, the Aerostorm Gatling unit, which I think I have one, the Missile Storm Gatling Blaster, I don't think I've ever even seen that, the Switchfire, again, I don't have one of those either, and a Sneak Shot, which I totally have. 1994, this blaster debuted. That is before the era of the crossbow, making this one of the oldest blasters we've taken a look at on this channel so far. And this one for a whole, what, like retail at like $30, I think, Gave you a whole four nerf points. We really do care. And there we are. High capacity nerf circa 1994. This thing looks phenomenal. There's like not even a scratch on it. The stickers look pristine. That's incredible for a blaster that's super old, almost as old as I am. We don't get to talk about them a whole lot on this channel, but this is the Nerf Ballistic Ball. It is one of the original Nerf ammos and one of the most fondly remembered, in my opinion, because it's been there since pretty much the beginning with the Blaster Ball and the Master Blaster, and now the Ball Zooka. You just kind of shove them in the front. Each chamber will apparently hold three balls up to a total of 15, but I've got a total of two here, but you can still get the same effect. Pull it back, and it indexes, push it forward, and it fires. Except for this one, the ball's misshapen, so go like that, and then we'll index it. So for here, it's got a nice pop to it, and a similar type of pop to it. Now it should be noted, 15 rounds of such a large ammunition in a package this small. That's pretty incredible for a blaster like this, and I'm quite impressed 
that they managed with that much firepower in a blaster of this size. But let's be real, the modification potential of this thing isn't exactly stellar. Small air volume, small draw, it's a HAMP, higher pressure manual pump, which means it basically will fire as hard as you can push this forward, and that's the best you're gonna get out of it. The whole clicking and spring loading everything is just the actual chambers and of course the barrel indexing, which locks into place very strongly, I might add. With rapid firing up to 15 of those beautiful ballistic balls, again, in a package this small, that's a lot to love, but it doesn't offer us a whole lot nowadays now, does it? Sure, it would be super fun to use, but ballistic balls are kind of a premium item and they get lost and stolen easily. So I wouldn't really recommend using one of these things when there's probably other things out there that would fit the same exact role as your Balzuka. However, this thing does have a legacy. A legacy because in 1994 or presumably earlier, Accolade Games and Kenner, the makers of Nerf at the time, apparently two of their executives met in an elevator and came up with the bright idea of including the Nerf Balzuka in their latest video game hit. Bubsy 2, the sequel to Bubsy. This is one of those games that you either have fond memories of it or is absolutely worthless because Bubsy is not exactly a well-designed game. It did get this sequel and of course, the ever-lovable Bubsy 3D, one of the worst video games ever made. The problem with Bubsy is that it doesn't really have a clear identity. It wants to be Mario, but it also wants to be Sonic while having the glide from Arrow the Acrobat. It doesn't exactly play all that bad, but it doesn't exactly play all that well. But his main weapon of choice, canonically, is the Nerf Balzuka, a blaster you can find in the game and collect balls for power-ups to reload it and shoot the things to progress through each stage. Does that make it worth picking up and playing? Maybe if you're really curious, but I highly recommend you don't. But it's really cool to see that as far back as 1994, like this Nerf wasn't exactly the biggest thing ever back then. It got its own video game tie-in. That's kind of nifty. So now if you find one of these in a thrift store and you make sure it actually isn't broken and seems like it works, it can be worth picking up if you can find a ballistic ball or foot, if you can find a ballistic ball or 15 for it. But I don't think it's something you necessarily need to go out and rush and get because it doesn't really have a lot of mod potential. It doesn't really have a lot of things to add to your arsenal nowadays. But it should be said that this thing is stupidly fun and represents perfectly Nerf in the 90s next to sea creatures and stuff like that. But that's all I've got for you. I'm Walcom7. Thank you. Day four of the month of Tag Back. The show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it offers today in the present. And this time, we're taking a look at something not from Nerf, not from Busby, not from Lennard, Kenner, Maybe one of those companies bought this company. I have absolutely no idea, but we're taking a look at something that you would maybe think is a Nerf blaster because it's compatible with Nerf ammunition. It's actually pretty impressive because this thing came out pretty much right at the height of Nerf arrow shooters. Introducing the 1993 Tootsie Toys FX Stinger blaster thing. But before we get started, make sure you hit like, get subscribed, ring the bell, leave a comment, do all of the algorithmic garbage, help the channel grow so you can help the hobby grow. And this is the FX Stinger. I have this blaster because of a very dear friend who sent it to me. It's something that I've never seen in a thrift store. I've really never seen a whole lot of other people with them, but I do know that at one point, probably Bobo Bob sent me pictures of the internals that I have actually lost at this time. So I don't remember if the internals on this thing are any good or not, but it does in fact, fire nerf missiles. You see, I remember the Facebook post from Fowler saying that he found a blaster from his childhood that he kind of forgot existed until he saw it and he managed to get one with the box. So why do I have it? Because Fowler sent it to me. I have no connection with this blaster now, but I feel obligated to carry the torch that is the FX Stinger and all of the 90s childhood. The ultimate electronic missile launcher. Flashing lights and six different electronic sounds. Shoots foam missiles up to 30 feet. And that kid looks like he's, uh, 
He's about ready to go postal. Launches four missiles without reloading. On the back, a very similar story, although it gives you this cool line art of the blaster itself. And warning, never aim or shoot this at anyone or any animals. Copyright 1993 Tootsie Toy and the instructions on how to use it. And it says it has two whole modes. Kind of impressive to have something like this with the box. Thank you, Fowler. And I will put it up on the shelf. In fact, I don't know why it's not already up on the shelf, but it needs to go up there. But yes, this is the FX Stinger. And it looks bizarre, but it's like all of the 90s with that like cheap plastic look and yet... Obviously trying to mimic something that Cobra would have put out. Absolutely love it. The uh, magazine up here is actually what holds. I don't want to do this too many times. In fact, it doesn't really want to come out right now. But holds your batteries. Four AA batteries. So you can do sweet things like this. It just loops. Yeah, if you had any kind of like toy gun in the 90s uh, that wasn't a space pistol kind of thing, it made those sounds. So you feel right at home. You're welcome for that. The blaster has, of course, the flashing muzzle with like a single light bulb in it, which surprisingly still works. The magazine that holds the batteries, the turret, which it shoots these missiles. Just kind of put that on there like that. And I did have all four of them. But one of them, while I was trying to shoot the original tag back on this, got lost on a roof. And I don't remember if I ever got it back. However, it does shoot Nerf missiles flawlessly. This is a priming slide. This is a selector switch. This is a trigger. This is some kind of thing. And in order to actually fire the blaster, you have to slip it down into fire mode. And now that unlocks the priming slide and makes that happen which is kind of gnarly, but not as cool as when you fire the FX Stinger. It makes that really imposing sound and then nothing happened because the thing didn't rotate right. There we go. I'm gonna fire from the bottom first. And it fires pretty violently. Alignment is an issue. There we go. And it's got a really stout lockup on it, all things considered, even with that slide on there, unless you really want to break it. It's pretty well stuck on there. So a very interesting blaster. It does two things that I exceptionally love. One, lights and sounds. Those are awesome when it's not the only feature of the blaster, but two, it's also visually interesting because of when you're priming that back, and that thing coming out and you can't fire it until that's returned forward. And you gotta love that sound from this big meaty speaker. It actually looks cool and it's reasonably comfortable as well. The grip is really just a block, but it comforts my fingers nicely. The trigger is thin, doesn't really hurt. This speaker thing does kind of get in the way and dig into your hand, but if you hold it a little bit like that, not a problem. And of course, it just looks absolutely awesome. This is an amazing blaster that honestly, if I ever came across another one that was like broken in some way, I would love to modify it because it feels like this blaster has a ton of modification potential. Those missiles fly with a pretty decent velocity on them. They don't always line up perfectly, but when they do go, it just feels like there's a lot of oomph in there. The back end of it, where that, what I assume is like the plunger rod of the blaster sticks out, that's pretty big. And then you can kind of look inside there and see if this big round thing is the plunger tube. That is a lot of potential power room. Or it could be nothing. It's kind of all or nothing with these kinds of blasters, but if it could be modified to hit a little bit harder, it'd be cool to have like rear loading slots on the back of this thing and I mean, nobody else is gonna have a blaster like that. So I wouldn't wanna do it to something that's like a newer one or one that functions because you'd be ruining somebody's childhood toy, which could kind of sucks. And I have no idea how rare these things are or anything like that. There's like a whole one other video on YouTube about this thing, but it's super cool. It technically has a future if we wanted to give it one, 
And you know what? I think it's definitely worth checking out if you can find one. I wouldn't go out and specifically search for one, but if you ever see one at a thrift store or something like that, pick it up. If it doesn't work, maybe modify it. And to me, one of the weirder legacies is that in 1993, there wasn't a whole lot of Nerf arrow shooters out quite yet. I know arrows were like the other thing that Nerf blasters shot that weren't balls, but to put something out like this that soon that had cross ammo compatibility is pretty interesting. I'm not sure if the Tycho Thunder Strike or whatever. Hey, what do you want from a high powered blaster? Balls. More balls. Thunder Strike 20. Not three. Not six. Not three. Not even eight. Not six. 20 rapid fire shots. Balls. More balls. One commercial that has the kid. I actually have one of these things. I just don't have the hose to it because apparently the hose is just disintegrated, but it had a big long hose that you filled up with 20 balls. <laughs> It was a flywheel blaster. In fact, probably one of the first flywheel blasters ever made from Tyco. Not Nerf, not Laramie, not Lennard, not, not any of those companies. By Tyco. I wonder if those balls are also Nerf compatible because that's kind of like the start of the foam wars right there until Nerf eventually just completely destroyed all the competition apparently because basically the only one that existed after that was Busby. Because we all know, we, we, we call something like this, even though it's not Nerf branded, it shoots Nerf rockets, therefore it's a Nerf blaster. Kind of how things go, like Kleenex being for tissues and Xerox being for a photocopier. That's kind of how it works with Nerf. It's just an easy way of describing what the thing is. If I call this a Nerf blaster, you know it's going to shoot some kind of foam projectile. I'm going on. I'm Walcoma7. Thank you very much for watching this video. It is day five of Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it can offer us today in the present and this time. We're getting weird, obviously. I, I don't script any of this out, so whatever just pops in my head kind of comes out of my mouth, but we're going to take a look at a blaster that is familiar and yet totally bizarre i th this commercial pretty much sums it up all new from busby toys air warriors gunsmoke let the game begin insert load and blast nice shot yes it's smoking eject and get ready to shoot all over again yeah Perfect aim. Challenge yourself to get the best shot. Whoa, tough enough. Gunsmoke by Busby Toys. The 2014 Busby Gunsmoke. This is a really cool looking blaster that you don't see very many of nowadays. Although it's not unobtainable. As of right now, you could buy one on Amazon for like 25 bucks in the US. And I'm sure they're still on shelves or something at some like hunting stores or something like that. But honestly, you don't see it talked about enough because it's got a really super interesting gimmick and it's a kind of bizarre mechanism. So ignoring the name of the gun smoke and the commercial we watched, this is a reshelled Busby double shot, which is by far and large, I believe the most popular tag back for some reason. So. If this video doesn't do that good, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It is essentially the same blaster with one key difference. The gun smoke only has one shell chamber, meaning it's single shot, I guess, or rifle or whatever you want to call it. Uses the same exact shells and the same exact darts. However, you got to put batteries in it, which is really interesting for a blaster like this. And that is because when you fire it, I really hope that shows up on camera a little bit, but I'm gonna... All right, it ejects the shells. I'm gonna fire it a couple more times so you can actually get an idea of what that effect is like, because it's honestly pretty freaking cool. Not something that's entirely new or unique. After all, it's something that cap guns have been doing for a very long time, pretty much since kids wanted to play with toy firearms. However, this one, shoots a foam dart. And as far as I know, it's the only blaster that smokes and has that kind of milsim realistic technology that makes it smoke out of the barrel after firing a foam dart. And Busby 
as far as they would like to let you believe, only ever made this one blaster. But there is in fact two of them. In fact, I believe there's no video of the second one online, and yet we know it exists because Buff Daddy Nerf, because Buff Daddy Nerf did an article on it, a review. I have been searching for this blaster for years. It never pops up for sale. Nobody talks about it, and Buff Daddy Nerf didn't keep it. I want one. I want one very badly. So if you do have one, please send me an email because I would love to get my hands on one of these things because apparently they don't exist and I would like to show it in front of the audience today. But we're talking about this gun smoke. Now, yes, this is your typical shell ejecting Busby blaster. It's got storage in the stock for two more darts. Gets boring, although the should be stated doesn't even smell that bad. The range is absolutely horrible because it's a reshell of a blaster that's been around since like 2004. Now, interesting enough, it does take two AA or AAA batteries. I guess I gotta open the damn thing, huh? Yep, two AA batteries, and these are the Sunbeam ones, and they're probably pretty old. Oh, it takes three. It takes three AA batteries. So it will not smoke without batteries in it. I'm gonna put in three brand new AA batteries. So this is a note for editing Walcom. Make sure you get the batteries out of this thing before you shove it back in a box. Cause uh, I don't wanna see if this thing will smoke better with brand new batteries in. Oh my, yes it does. Wow. That, that was actually really impressive. Huh, the way this thing smokes, I'm still not entirely sure. In fact, I'd love to know what the chemical makeup of these cartridges are. And I know they sold these cartridges separately. And that's another thing I'd love to get my hands on is the retail packaging for one of these cartridges. So I could put it on the wall and save it. Because again, this is one of those things that seems for some reason, exceptionally rare, even though I don't think anybody's looking to buy it except for me. Little hole, and it's got like a little tiny cartridge with some kind of gel-like substance that has not gone bad over the years. And it just seals in there and what happens is this still has two plunger tubes inside of it. The way it works is when you prime it, that obviously cocks back the springs. If you know anything about a double strike, both plunger tubes are still there and you can see there's a hole right there for the shell. There's a hole right there for the smoke effect. And then deep inside the blaster, there's still two plunger tube holes that release the air. Basically what happens is when you pull this trigger, it hits a switch Basically what happens is when you pull this trigger, it hits a switch which warms up or evaporates that liquid gel in some capacity, which then the air leaks out slowly through the other barrel and just kind of puffs that smoke out the front of it. And again, it's a very convincing effect once you have fresh batteries in it. It won't really do anything unless it's primed beforehand though. Now, in terms of practical use today, well, there pretty much isn't any. It's a strictly cosplay or LARPing piece. And I'm sure the LARP crowd would absolutely love to get a bunch of these, which is kind of why I'm doing this video. If you're a LARPer and you have game rules that don't pertain to how hard or fast the blaster shoots, well, good news on you. There's still a couple left on Amazon. Go pick them up. Use my link down in the description. There's a link to Amazon where you can pick them up and I get a little bit of a kickback. Costs you nothing extra really massively helps out the channel. And it's affected like, Busby, you make cool stuff. Make make more cool stuff like this. I'm not sure if there was some kind of other reason why this whole system never came back, but it obviously isn't illegal because they're still selling the thing on Amazon. Could be a whole new line in and of its own that would actually be really cool because people want that effect. It looks cool. But there is uh, something to say about using this out in public because, uh, if you did take this out in public and people were really paying attention to you for some reason, they may get the wrong idea of what's going on. Is that me being a little too safe? Probably, but you can never be too safe in today's climate, especially here in the United States when it comes to toy guns. But overall, I love the gun smoke. I think it's better than the double shot in a lot of ways, which I know is somewhat heretical, but it just feels really good. It looks absolutely awesome. That effect is magnificent. And I planned on modding one at one point. I just haven't yet for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe I should get on that. Let me know down in the comment section below. And also let me know what blasters you wanna see on Tagback. I see a couple of you already doing that and more people can do it. 
So let me know. I, I will literally take your opinions at this point because at this moment, I am done with what I had planned under the desk with the exception of one blaster. I'm not sure I'm gonna cover. Still on the fence about that one, but we got 20 days left of tag back and I've got a lot of blasters. Thank you very much for watching this video on Walkama 7, of course. Day six of the month of tag back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past, see what it could offer us today in the present, and this time! Take a look at a blaster that I've wanted to take a look at on this show for a very long time. One that has eluded me for years. However, recently I've come across uh, a couple of them in, in, in varying conditions. This is even all of them. I'm pretty sure there's one more. <sighs> Let's talk about the Nitro Quad. What is it about the Nitro Quad that just makes it one of the coolest blasters Nerf has ever made? Well, it's essentially like a Nerf knuckle duster kind of looking thing. It's, uh, well, to be fair, the whole reason why I wanted one of these so much is because it reminds me of the best weapon from one of the best video games ever made. That's right, I can only be talking about Kid Icarus Uprising for the Nintendo 3DS, and the best weapon would be the Artillery Claws. This is where I would insert game footage, but I obviously don't have that, so you're just gonna have to use your imagination. But man, I loved them Artillery Claws, and I had a good pair that I used to destroy people with in the online multiplayer. And also, why is there not a sequel to Kid Icarus Uprising? What the heck, Nintendo? This is why I hate you as a company. And the Nitro Quad is kind of like that, except for not anywhere near it, but I wanna make one like it, darn it. I really want the Nitro Quad to be good but it's a blaster from like 1998 and it ain't good. So you might be looking at this thing and figuring like, how the heck does it even work? And that's a great question because it's a nitro quad and it's an old weird blaster that Nerf has never made anything else similar to ever again. It fires the old school mega dart of which uh, I have a couple and they're at a very real premium and I need to find a way to get actual more mega darts, but it holds four of them, a four dart capacity in whatever the heck you want to call this shape. And it fires, well, kind of however you want it to, to be perfectly honest. It works pretty much how you would expect. This is your trigger. This is your priming handle. It is in fact a springer. And this on the side is a dial that has little numbers and things written on it that will kind of tell you like how you want this thing to fire. Do you want to fire one shot? Do you want to fire two shots? You want to fire two shots from specific barrels? It will do all of that, which is kind of weird. For instance, I have this on A, which is one. I open that up and then I pull this trigger and it will fire what I assume to be this barrel. That's exactly what it was. You will notice the performance is absolute garbage. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not really bothering to do chronographing or anything like that, because who knows how good this blaster would work unless I were to have a brand new one back in space here in 1998. But the next set after that is C and D, which is two, and we go. It fires only one of them. But then we can do A, B, which is apparently barrel three, and then D, which is four. And then it has a shot for one and two, and then three and four. So it could actually do two shots, obviously at diminished range because there's not a whole lot of plunger volume here. Now I have a few of these because my first time actually getting a hold of this blaster was somebody gave me the internals of a blaster I had been searching for for quite some time. They had no idea what it was. They gave me the internals because the actual shell is this knuckle duster kind of thing with the rest of this wall come apart, which is uh, fair enough, I suppose. Here's another one. Uh, only problem with this one is the hose is busted, but Otherwise it works the same and I can replace that hose and it's honestly on the list of things I may modify. This one works flawlessly except for it's missing one of the little connector pieces right there, which arguably makes it way more comfortable, but also way less steady. But that's kind of what you get with a blaster designed for small kids. Even though the grip itself is rather large, the space between the actual blaster and the grip is not large and it will be very hard for many people to hold this blaster. But of course, the coolest thing to do 
which I don't remember the last time anybody has ever done this. I'm definitely the first person this week to do so. Dual wielding nitro quads. Because you can totally dual wield nitro quads. This is all I want in life. It's funny, like, now that I'm sitting here looking at it, all the actual blaster, like, designation barrels and stuff are on the thing that you can't see because it's inside the shell. Overall, it's another unique nerf blaster from the past that I kind of wish that Hasbro would do more with. I mean, it's cool. It is super cool, and I would love a new iteration of the Nitro Quad. I mean, it looks cool. It feels good. It's one of the best design blasters I've seen Hasbro ever come out with, and I love the Nitro Quad. Nowadays, uh, well, first problem is it shoots Mega, the original Mega, which is hard to come by, and honestly, you saw the velocity, not very good. It actually uses, as you can see, one of those post designs where the air comes out of the, this is not great, so you definitely wanna re-barrel that and have, I mean, that's a good amount of spring tension, and hopefully a decent amount of plunger volume, but of course, it's going through here, and then it's going out here, and it has to deal with this mechanism, and that probably leads to a bunch of complications when it comes to actual performance. Would have been a heck of a lot cool if this was like an air tank with a pump. That would that would make a lot more sense, and that's kind of what I thought the Nitro Quad was going to be when I first laid eyes on it. And it is meant to be left or right-handed. You just kind of pull that off and flip that thing around. And that's why it says A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, and four is because one through four is on one side and then A through D is on the other, which I just found out by actually looking at the blaster during this video. Could you mod these things? Totally. However, they are rather rare. They shouldn't be. It was a $10 blaster when it originally came out, but it doesn't say Nitro Quad anywhere on the blaster, which means it's really hard to find this thing when you're searching for it. A lot of people out there probably don't even know that this blaster is called the Nitro Quad unless they saw the packaging for it. So it's a completely useless blaster that looks cool, that I have a special attachment to because I like weapons like this. It's kind of my thing. That is practically pointless, which uh, I still want to modify one, but judging on how rare they are, I don't know if I ever should, even though I have this set right here, which obviously needs to be fixed. And then I have another set that's just missing this piece right here. So maybe I'll modify them because I would really like to have two Nitro Quads. I mean, they're basically claw mounted knuckle duster things that fire darts that could also do two shot shotguns. I love them. I love them very much. And I bet you do too. And I'm sorry that it's such a hard blaster to get a hold of. And Hasbro, I wish you'd make more of them. And really, when else am I going to talk about a blaster like this? Thank you very much for watching this episode of Tag Back. We Welcome to day seven of Tag Back. Show where we take a look at blasters from the past and see what they can offer us today in the present. And this time! You know, the best part about doing this is I just have thousands of blasters to dig through. Just bins upon bins, hundreds of dollars of Home Depot HDX bins. And I just get to pull stuff from them and do a video on it. And I'm going to guarantee you that we're going to see some stuff that's not even that old that I just want to talk about. Because that's the entire point of Tag Back. Not that I'm not taking your considerations in the comments section about what I'm going to do a video on. But now, I'm going to do a blaster that I just want to talk about. Because those are the best kind. And the funniest part is, while it is made by Hasbro, it is not a Nerf product. But it does shoot a projectile. And it is really cool. Introducing a toy from a movie I have not seen from a franchise that I know basically nothing about... It's the G.I. Joe Retaliation Battle Kata Blaster. Circa like 2012 or so. I should have probably looked at the specs before that. Editing Walcom will fill you in. Oh yeah, we're going there. So what is this 1911 that was swallowed by a freaking Chris Vector thing? Arguably, one of the most realistic and aggressive silhouettes of a toy that Hasbro has pretty much ever made that I'm trying to show you today. And uh, 
It's one of my favorite things that I've ever gotten my hands on. I've had a couple of these, but I've never found any with the actual projectiles, and I never bought it when it was on store shelves. But this one, this one has the thing and has the things. And that's why I want to talk about it, because, well, to start it off with, it is so comfortable. I, oh my god, I love this grip so much. It just looks cool. And it feels great to me. If you have bigger hands, it might suck. I don't care because I have small hands. And this is awesome. Now, it is a blaster. But as you can probably tell, if you're looking at it, it's not a Nerf blaster. Hasbro does own the G.I. Joe license. In fact, if you buy newer G.I. Joe figures, the weapons that they use are now pretty much all Nerf blasters. You can buy even Marvel Legends figures. You can buy like cable and stuff had like Nerf blasters. Like I, I swear to God, he had like a barrel break. It's all stuff that is kind of foreign to me. I'm I'm more of a weeb. I, I don't know if you could tell, but that's just so cool. I, it's a really good way to make me hate you even more for not bringing back the barrel break in the icons line has real. I want an elite barrel break and I don't know why that hasn't happened yet because I know that blaster is popular but I'm getting off track this isn't a nerf blaster it is a G.I. Joe missile shooter that's the projectile that this thing uses and if you've ever owned an action figure specifically G.I. Joe but many others you will recognize what this is and you will be laughing right now because that's what this pistol shoots one of the most comfortable pistols I've ever gotten my hands on. Absolutely love everything about this design. Really want a blaster that is pretty much this. I want to take my pew pew and shove it in here. Just, oh, it'd be so cool because I love everything about this. But this is the projectile it uses. And how does this blaster work? I was actually really confused myself. But after spending a little bit of time playing with it, it's a bolt action. It's a bolt action 1911 Chris Vector that shoots G.I. Joe missiles. See this thing? That's the bolt. And how does it work? You flip the bolt into the top position, prime it back, which doesn't actually actuate anything. Take your G.I. Joe missile and you just drop it in and then you close the bolt. Still won't fire, gotta lock it. And now you're not prepared for this one. I can basically shoot at the camera, but it actually goes farther than you would think. Not far enough, but pretty far but farther than you think for the mechanism where it's like literally the mechanism is got it these are you lose these immediately that's why anytime you find these they never have the ammo which it's incredible that this one does i didn't know that's what those little holes at the front were for makes me so happy again because it's so cool and it is self-correcting you don't have to have the missile in there in any specific way you just kind of drop it in make sure it's far enough forward and then close the bolt and there we go. Sometimes it does get jammed if you're doing it at an awkward angle, but I love it. However, that is not the only thing the Battle Kata Blaster does. You've probably noticed that it looks freaking ridiculous. This button on the side, which is ambidextrous, it's cool that the bolt is ambidextrous and this is ambidextrous. If you pull that, the grip comes off and now you have this beautiful grip that I love immensely. And I've actually destroyed one of these in the past trying to shove Boomco Farshot internals into it, which I think would totally work, but it was years ago when I wasn't very good at modding. But this uh, goes in there and then you get a wicked cool knife thing, which is uh, not foam. It's a very soft, malleable rubber. So if you do stab somebody with it, kind of hurts you can feel it but it's just foam you slash with it you feel it it hurts but it doesn't cut you it doesn't do any actual damage and i guess that's okay for a kid's toy and if it was like just slightly longer it would be the perfect oh god everything about this if it was scaled up like maybe 15 percent would probably be better but this thing is so cool the, i mean maybe a war would let you use that if it's like somebody you know and trust you know they're gonna do you know funny things with it but it's not it's not foam it's not exactly that safe and then to remove it put it back into the blaster press that down slide the grip off slide the grip back on and it's back to being a bolt action 1911 chris vector modification potential is uh non-existent now the shell 
could obviously be used for something, but you've got a uphill battle with this since, of course, the grip is removable. So that's your catch mechanism. And that's not a lot of room. That's not a lot of space for things. However, I did find one. I found a modification this time. I actually looked it up because I was curious and who else do you think modified one of these things years ago? Psych. Of course, Psych modified the Battle Kata Blaster to shoot something. He shoved apparently air tanks in it. So there's actually two air tanks in the blaster and made it shoot normal darts, which is just dumb cool. Which now that I'm thinking about it, you could totally shove like an original OG Panther tank in this thing and make it hit like 200 FPS. He actually used this part and put the pump in here, which means unfortunately it lost its ability to be a knife, but small price to pay for actually being able to use the thing in a nerf battle. And I'm sure some other people have done stuff as well, but that's the cursory glance that I made on you. I, I just love this blaster. That's why I wanted to talk about it. It's like, it looks cool. It's comfortable. I mean, it's pretty real steel, about as real steel as it gets, but man, does it feel super good. And I kind of wish this was a blaster because as far as I know, and I do not have this, there was actually a reshell of the Fury Fire in this line years after it came out. And that one came with a unique scope, but it was still a Fury Fire. I don't have one. In fact, I'm willing to bet that's somewhat of a rare thing, even though I've seen it on store shelves. And I went like, well, it's just an old dark tag blaster being reshelled. Why would I buy that? So I didn't, but now, decade later, yeah, yeah, I'm regretting that. I kind of wish I would have. Battle Call to Blaster, absolutely love it. The shell is absolutely awesome. Most of the time it's missing the blade, but you should be able to find the pistol grip and the pistol itself somewhere, probably with no ammo. Still worth getting, because if you want to modify one to make it shoot nerf darts, this is a challenge and it's a challenge worth taking because it is so freaking cool. I have no idea how this video is going to perform because Tag Back is a mysterious beast where the reason why I stopped doing Tag Back was because people weren't watching it. And honestly, that's mostly my fault. I should make it a more interesting series, but when I can put a little less effort into the videos and do them every day, it's working out pretty decently so far. But this isn't a nerf blaster, so I don't even know. I, I, I Let's see what the battle caught. Is it gonna do better? Is it gonna do worse? Time will tell, but I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching. Now, I know what you're probably thinking right now. Welcome! it's the eighth day of the month of Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it can offer us today in the present. And this time... You should probably show us something that's bad, that's awful, that's irredeemably terrible, and has basically no value to anyone whatsoever other than nostalgia. And honestly, that nostalgia is probably also just slathered in disappointment, because I don't see how you would have gotten this blaster as a child and actually liked it. Because uh, when you see this beautiful slice of 90s cheese, you might notice something that's, uh, that's a little dishonest. What's better than hitting the mall? Hitting it with a Nerf slingshot. Allow us to demonstrate proper usage whilst you frolic. Locate target. Babe alert. Target located. Consequently, we can hit on them. Long distance! You gotta love it. Like we love mines? Definitely. Not! The Nerf slingshot. Cause it's Nerf or nothing. That's right, they never actually show the blaster firing. It's all computer generated, I guess is what you would call it back in the, the early 90s. D don't worry though, they did another commercial where they show it firing. Go ahead, make my day. The Nerf Slingshot, it's Nerf or nothing. Knock it out two vintage commercials in one video because we're taking a look at the lovable, possibly the worst Nerf Blaster ever made. I mean, seriously, this 1992 Nerf Slingshot. I mean, we say that, but this blaster is awful. This is barely a blaster. If you couldn't tell by the way these commercials were done, 
It's a barely functional piece of plastic. There's a debate on when exactly this blaster hit shelves, whether it was 1991 or 1992 or 1994. The box art has told people that it came out in 1992 because that was the style of the packaging that year. And it's supposed to have stickers, but this one doesn't. In fact, you would barely know it's a Nerf product without actually knowing it was a Nerf product. Actually, for all I know, this is a knockoff, but I've had several of these. In fact, we'll take a look at a legit one later on because you wouldn't believe what they brought back a decade later. All right, so it clearly uses the Nerf Ballistic Ball, which as you probably have seen through the Valzuka video that I did, uh, I don't know if you know this, this is the eighth day. We've done seven videos previous to this one. You can go back and watch them. I'll even have a little playlist up in the top right corner. And essentially all you do is wedge them in the top of the blaster. That loads your beautiful slingshot. And why is it called a slingshot? Because this is the sling. It is a piece of bungee with some tubing on the side of it to, I assume, protect the bungee and protect your hands with a little like rubber knocker that hits the ball and the ball's held in there rather firmly but it will knock the ball out and then obviously index the next ball down for a total capacity of three. Super high capacity circa 1992. You can't really even pull it back that far, but it doesn't matter because bear witness to the sheer awesomeness that is the slingshot. God, it's even worse than I imagined. That one actually kind of went far. Went far, I mean, you can literally throw this ball a magnitude of times farther than this thing will actually fire the ball. So if you never figured it out, why did those commercials always kind of make it look like it was the best thing ever? You could snipe people with it. You thought Nerf had deceptive marketing. Now, back in the day, they held no prisoners. Now, it's not like this was a tremendously expensive thing and it did technically function as a toy. And I assume a child back then could have fun with it, but they also released like the Blastomatic and the Master Blaster and other things that fired foam balls that weren't all that expensive and fired way better. So this thing seems like a joke. But of course, that wasn't good enough because in 2002 or 2003, they released the Atom Blaster line, which we've already covered a blaster a long time ago that is deceptively expensive from this line. However, they had other blasters. Two of them were slingshots in the same exact style. Now this one, I, I don't have a version of, unfortunately, I, I, I don't have it. But this one, that looks familiar, don't it? That's cause it's the same blaster, but worse. Meet the Atomizer. It's the same thing as a 1992 slingshot with a different grip and different colors and one less ball. For you see, it only holds two. Somebody paid real money for this at one point. Now I'm required to let you know that corporate has told me to ask you, what is the difference between these two blasters? That's right. They're the same blaster. You did a bad idea back in the 90s, you bring it back over a decade later. This is somehow worse. I mean, maybe the other slingshot that I don't have is basically this, but in a different shell. I don't know. It has some kind of hopper on the top of it, but this thing, now to be fair, again, not a very expensive blaster, but we already had dart blasters. We already had all of the cool things. We're coming out of the air jet power line. We're coming out of the max force line. There was a lot to love in Nerf. So why? Does this thing exist? Answer, because I think Hasbro secretly hates dinosaurs. So they wanted to waste as much petroleum products as possible developing something as a giant middle finger to the dinosaurs, which is probably why now they actually made dinosaur themed blasters. Uh, Cause they, they really, really, really hate dinosaurs. It's the only thing I can imagine. They hate the environment and they hate dinosaurs. So it comes to question, should you ever pick these up? And my answer is no. Uh, even the vintage one, it's practically worthless. Nobody really wants them except for weird collectors like me. I would gladly take either of these in their packages and throw them up on the wall behind me. But uh, no, they're they're absolutely awful. They're terrible, horrendous. I don't have a Sothoris, but just bad. And you should probably stay far, far away unless you desperately want to play with bad blasters in which these are great. These are the best bad blasters that you can waste money on. And it goes to show just how much innovation Nerf can pump out within a decade. That's all I've got for you. I'm Walcom7. Thank you very much for watching.
It's time for Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it could offer us today in the present. Part 9 of the month of Tag Back. Just ignore the fact that all these videos are going to come out pretty much at the same time, and I'm probably going to torpedo my channel because uh, YouTube analytics are not going to like that. A lot of people are probably going to unsubscribe because I put all these videos out at the same time, and a lot of other people don't have time to watch all these videos in a row. So, YouTube analytics be damned, we're going to be talking about the Mega Double Breach. Blasting barrels from mega power and impact. This Nerf Mega Blaster from 2017 isn't that old. You may be under the impression that Tag Back is a show where we take a look at blasters from the past and see what they could offer us today in the present. And this time, it's not really that old because uh, really Tag Back is a show where I can take a look at any blaster that I haven't really done on the channel before. And the Double Breach is one of those because when this thing came out, I was a little upset. This is one of the coolest looking shotguns into the entire ecosystem. If I had to equate it to something from like fantasy anime, this is like the shotgun that's on the back of the Arbalest from Full Metal Panic. I love the look of this thing, but it's incredibly deceptive. This is not the first time Nerf has done this and it sure as heck won't be the last because surprise, horrible little dart door on the side where you have to open it up and shove darts right up against the plunger tube. And it's not actually a breech loader. So if we take a look at the ugly side of the double breech, you basically use it like a, you would expect pump action, except for you realize, I, I, how do I, do I front load it? That, that would make too much sense with Nerf. Now you gotta open up this little butt flap on the side, and then you take your dirts, and you just kinda wedge them in there. Make sure they're nice and squished down, but when you prime it forward, it's gonna close automatically. I don't know why it won't open automatically or why there's not a button, but it does fire two darts. Now, you would remember that the Nerf Pump SG is basically like this with one dart, which makes entirely too much sense. This has two, and that makes it twice as good, at least, but still very deceptive. However, it is now primed. You pull the trigger, and it fires a dirt. And it fires that dirt pretty darn well, especially for a mega dirt. However, you have a second shot in here, and this thing has slam fire. So. If you hold down the trigger, that's what this finger does, it holds down the trigger, you pump it back, and then pump it forward, it aggressively launches out the second dart. But of course you could do that with both dirts, and that makes this thing kind of fun. The Nerf Fortnite Pump SG also had slam fire, which I think is just a holdover from this blaster, because this one had slam fire and it uses pretty much the same mechanism. It's got a comfy grip, it's got a cool aesthetic, it's got dart holders on the side, which they don't hold darts very well, but they are at least there and it makes it look even cooler. Tactical rail at the top for all your optics and uh, wow. Talk about one of the most deceptive blasters Hasbro has ever teased us with. I mean, when this was leaked, nobody knew how it worked, but we saw the two barrels and it was like, it's too big to be a front loader. And we it wasn't even a front loader. It was that weird breech butthole system that's hidden on the box. And you can still pick this thing up if you absolutely have to have it. Mod potential is pretty much non-existent. The priming linkage is very weak. This thing can't take much of a spring upgrade. Even though it has two spots for darts and two barrels, it only has a single plunger tube. This is actually a smart AR system and smart AR systems are notoriously almost unmoddable. But she is very thin, especially compared to a fat kid like me. And that gives it somewhat of a cool aesthetic. And the fact that you get two shots of Mega off this thing, I mean, it's not gonna rewrite the rules of Mega. And honestly, had I done the video when this thing came out, it would have been scathing, but I avoided it because it was expensive and I didn't want to waste the money on it. Nowadays, I kind of like it. I, especially after I've seen how bad things can get with the Nerf Mega Fortnite Pump SG, this thing is a heck of a lot better. Rattling off both those shots with slam fire feels good. It's just a shame the thing isn't actually like a Nerf Mega version of the I don't know, barrel break? So it's fun for a stock blaster, but honestly a big shock could probably do you better. And for that, we just kind of relegate the Nerf Mega Double Breach into obscurity. But if you want to pick one up, I'll have a link on to like Amazon and affiliate link where if you buy it, it helps the channel. It's probably way too expensive, but if you really have to have one, you might want to pick it up before it disappears because this is an older blaster. 2017 was, holy crap, like almost five years ago now. I can't math, but it's pretty darn close. Plus you can spin it. Yeah! Tactical! 
But that's all I have for the Nerf Mega Double Breach. I'm, of course, Walkama7. Thank you very much for watching this video. Cheers. Oh, God, it's Tag Back Part 10, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it could offer us today in the present. But it's the 10th one. It should be kind of special. And I got special things out in front of me that you can't see. But this one isn't a blaster. But when else am I going to show this crazy cool commercial? Hey, when you get a ball with moves like these, you got to oop it. Got a feeling I never had before. I got to oop, 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 oop. You got a little hit of oop and I need some more. I got to oop, 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 oop. Something inside me's going to loop, loop, loop it. Ow, look out. I got to oop, oop, oop it. My brain's doing circles. It's a whole new game. Got to oop. have one in the box it, it's called the, the, the oopy you thought product names were dumb in 2021 it's it's always been dumb baby watch out it's oopy it's rad it's bad it's the 90s fad i am almost certain this was never a fad I, i'm like a hundred percent certain of that and also this is from the 90s this thing looks like it's from the freaking 70s watch out it's oopy it wiggles it wobbles it curves it swerves because there's nothing better than a ball that you can't actually like play with i guess like you want a drunken ball like, i guess it would make some sports a heck of a lot more enjoyable watch out it's oopy give it air give it water give it life Wait, this thing requires water? Oh my god! Instructions! Blow up Oopy's air chamber halfway with air. Fill its water chamber with up to six ounces of tap water. Continue to blow up Oopy's air chamber. I need water. I don't have plumbing up here. I got the blue one. It doesn't have anything else. Oh my god, there's like instructions in there. Holy crap! Nerf Oopy ball, it's circular madness. Oopy prep. With your personal supply of hot air, blow up the chamber marked air halfway. You may have to squeeze the special valve to open it. Fill a measuring cup or glass with six ounces of lukewarm tap water and, blow it and pour it into the water chamber. Do not overfill. Caution, do not use pool or chemically treated water, which could damage the vinyl. Overfilling could burst water chamber, so don't guess at the amount. Measure. Man, screw you. You really think I'm going to like bust out the measuring glasses? Oh my god, there's... There's like a whole legacy of the Oopy here. This is great because this is going to be a really boring video considering it's just a freaking blow up ball. Set Oopy Scoop. How Oopy behaves is where it goes is depend on how you hold it before you throw it. Sort of. After all, what fun would life be if it was always predictable? The Oopy Bloopy. Point the water chamber up or to the side, then spin away from your body. Throw either to the front or hook your arm and toss it sideways. Loop the Oopy. Point the water changer up, then spin towards your body. The Oopy Tornado. Point the water chamber directly away from your body, then throw straight ahead. Look for all three Oopy designs. I actually kind of like the splattered one. That would have been pretty cool. We got what, stars? Yeah, we got stars. Wow, that is a lot of stuff for what equates to a freaking blow-up volleyball. That has somebody's initials on it and this thing's old i am going to I, I imagine this is how like the rona came around is somebody picking up this old 90s inflatable ball and decided to try to blow it up this gets even better when you realize i'm a heavy asthmatic and it's that time of the year where i can barely breathe as is because of all the allergens in the air like mold so this is gonna be fun What the frick constitutes is halfway? Oh my god, it's literally just a bunghole that you put water into. And it's like, don't you dare not measure it. I don't have plumbing up. This thing's getting filled with beer. What's six fluid ounces to milliliters? 
answer is 177.44 milliliters. Well, I lied. I have something here that can vaguely measure. Um, man, I, this is this is dangerous territory, man. Why am I even doing this? It's not like I have anybody to throw my oopy to. This is how the end of the world starts. I'm glad I'm doing this before the end of the year, because imagine ringing in 2022 in a different way than filling up the ancient oopy. I, I swear to crawl that, oh God, I got oopy juice everywhere. I like to see think somewhere that there's a cute mommy that appreciates this horrendous video of an overweight man in a Santa hat and a guitar man shirt blowing up this vintage Nerf oopy. Oh no! My oopy's got a hole in it! Yo! The 90s were not kind to the oopy! Son of an oopy! It, it tore right here. I, I overinflated the oopy. No! As a, as a product of the 90s, I think the 90s sucked butt. Anyway, that's that's the Nerf oopy. This isn't a blaster, but this was tagged back and it does have Nerf on it. So sue me, but it does have the Nerf logo on it. So <sighs> thank you very much for watching this video. I'm of course, Walkout by seven. Just so if you got to the way to the end of the year, liked what I did here. So please hit like, get subscribed, leave a comment, ring the bell, do all that. I know what you're saying. Welcome, it's Tag Bag, the show where we take a look at a blaster for the past to see what it can offer us today, the present, and this time! We're gonna take a look at an extremely rare blaster that I looked, there's only like two videos of it on YouTube, one from Drac and one from Bubble Lolo, and the funniest part about that one is the one from Drac was actually Bubble Lolo's blaster, so I can assume the only other person on the planet that owns one of these things, fully functional, with the ammo, is Bobo freaking Lolo. But you're not the only one anymore, Bobo, for I have finally eBayed myself a working one with the ammo. And then I bought a second one because it had the box. It didn't have any ammo though, but it had the box and I want to put it up on the thing behind me. We're taking a look at the, crap, what year was this? The 2001 Nerf Gyro Strike. The only blaster in existence that you might be able to actually find the thing, but you probably won't find all of it. And if you have the ammo, I shudder to think how much it's actually worth. Look at this Romulan warship, make your rabbit a ripper. That is a joke that my dad had on his voicemail back in like 2001 when cell phones had voicemail things and it's stuck in my head. My older brother probably remembers that. Something about a Romulan warp drive and make your rabbit a ripper. I, that might have different connotations now that I'm an older person, but hey, it's the gyro strike and it looks weird and it's super funky. Now you may have seen one of these darts before. In fact, I'm almost certain I have in some capacity. You may not know what it was for though. It is a relatively durable piece of foam munition, but it is a, uh, it's a gyro strike round. It, it looks like a, like a, I'm not gonna say it, but some people know what we're talking about. The older folk of a certain age, please don't ban me YouTube, but it's got like a thick rubber head on it. It's got a full, full foam shaft here that doesn't have a hole in it. God, this video is gonna sound absolutely horrible if you're watching it on like a TV in your living room and somebody else is just listening in. But as the round that goes to the gyro strike, and this thing right here is a hopper. The gyro strike features a hopper. And it's one of the pieces that is very easily lost from the gyro strike. I actually have one other gyro strike and it's missing the ammo and it's missing the hopper. So you take a gyro strike, you take a gyro strike round and you just kinda put it in there like that. It features a trigger and a grip. The Grip is square, so it's not super comfortable, and it's a little small, but it fits my tiny baby hands just fine. And then this thing, this tongue that keeps flopping out, is how you prime the gyro strike. Let this be the official headphone warning, because things from here are gonna get pretty loud and obnoxious, because the gyro strike is a manual flywheeler. Pretty rare, 
pretty fun. Now you can't go too fast with these things and if they've been kicking around for a while, chances are the clutch and everything breaks because the way this thing works is when you prime this thing back, the flywheels spin, but they don't spin when you pull it forward. There's like no friction pulling it forward. If you go too fast, it kind of skips. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. That's me going too fast. That's me priming forward and having nothing happen. That's me pulling back slower and you can see the wheels are spinning and you gotta get those up to speed and there's a maximum speed this thing will allow you to get them to. And that mechanism has to spin both those wheels in opposite directions at the same speed at the same time. And that was a violent shot from a blaster from 2001. That's the cool thing about the Nerf Gyro Strike is this thing is no slouch. These are big boy rounds and they fly big boy distances to the point where you could theoretically use this thing in like a stock Nerf Elite War. But you probably freaking shouldn't because you're going to be really upset if you lose or damage the rounds of the gyro strike because I know how much these things cost. I've purchased two of them this month. We have put extra rounds on the side to fully equip the spaceship. And then the hopper will hold a grand total of four of our gyro rounds. Kind of like, uh, kind of like so. And I have to go grab that other one to complete the look. Behold, YouTube, a fully loaded Nerf 2001 Gyro Strike. And now I'm going to empty it. And you're going to find out really quickly that because it's a flywheeler and because it's manual, you basically have to keep it revving every shot or else the velocity will drop considerably. Oh yeah, headphone warning. Man, the Gyro Strike's cool. If you ever had a chance to play with one, I feel a little bad for you. I, of course, have one here. It will always be in the iceberg, ready and waiting for you with the ammo and all that, because that's what we do here at Fuzzy Wallers Industries. We preserve Nerf history, including spending way too much money buying multiples of these just so we can get the box and I wish I had it here for this video, but it's not gonna be here for a while. Uh, I'll probably post pictures of it on Instagram or something, so give me a follow if you like uh, fat boys, Nerf blasters, and rats. But that's all I've got for you. This was part, I don't know, 11, I think. Uh, there's a whole... All right, what I'm about to show you is a pair of blasters that apparently don't exist. I can't find any information on these whatsoever. I know they're made by Blue Box Toys, but there's nothing out there. The only thing that is available on the internet regarding these two foam dart shooters is the fact that I guess one of the concept artists posts work in progress pictures on their website or like concept pictures or, wow, I, I can't even find a date and I'm amazed. Like there might be more than two, but there was definitely two and they go together, they are, this one might be too mature for YouTube. We've got the fart dart and the burp blaster. Too hot for TV. So I've had to put a date on these, I would guess mid to late 90s, maybe early 2000s, because too gross burp, like this kind of gross out humor was a thing that was like, a, that was that was more prevalent in, I feel like the late 90s, early 2000s. But I mean, it kind of goes in waves because they had in the 80s, they had like the garbage pail kids and stuff like that. And then it kind of like a little fade around, kind of like, kind of like zombies. And then of course we got like the late 90s, we got crap like this and, all sorts of toys that like burped and peed and pooed. And I don't know why those were a thing. I never owned anything like that. I 
It's kind of gross, man. And then the last four or five years, I've been wondering why there's so many toys based around feces out on store shelves. Kids apparently love it. But we have two blasters here called the Fart Dart and the Burp Blaster. These are foam dart shooters. However, I know for a fact that we took this one apart at some point to try to get it to work and I don't think it do. I, we don't even really know how they prime. They've got like a weird friction mechanism on them, but it obviously looks like, I, I would love to give one of these things to Clowny for him to paint up because man, you could make these look gross as heck, but I don't know how many of these actually exist in the world. These might be the only two. They don't exist on eBay. I've never seen other pictures of them. This is the only YouTube video that includes these. And I'm sure the search algorithm for this one's gonna be absolutely garbage. So leave a comment down below, maybe hit that like button, share it with a couple of friends or else nobody's ever gonna know about the legacy of the fart dart. I gotta kind of get this close to the microphone. So you pull the trigger and it makes a farting sound. Uh, But then also if you prime it, that's what this doohickey is. Oh, that's like the longest fart sound effect of it. and sound effects in the fart dart than there was in the $120 Nerf Limited The Mandalorian Amben Phase Pulse Blaster. Hasbro, go screw yourselves. The Burp Blaster is practically identical in different colors with a different name. However, it also has different sound effects and this one surprisingly worked despite having batteries in it that were ancient and leaking. <laughs> And then if I prime it. So I, I don't actually know how these things work. I, I don't even really know what ammo they take. I can try like a, like a vintage micro dart, I guess. I'm gonna guess that maybe the burp blaster will be the thing that works. It does, does kind of fit. The weirdest part is it gets more tension the more you prime it. Okay, there's no more tension. Please, please fire the dart. YouTube has to see the burp blaster, the too gross, the, the whole legacy of you. Fire the dart! Oh my God! Oh my God! That was like a whole four feet. All right, no more messing around. Oh. Oh, you take a modern Medgen dart. But you won't fire it. How about your fart dart? You gonna, you got a fart dart? Somebody else is gonna probably come up with that name and think they're so witty. Fire! Okay, well, they do fire darts. These things are old. They use a mechanism that's very similar to something like the Ultimator. I don't even know where to begin, but here they are. I can't wait for all the DMs of people asking me for like close up pictures and asking me how much I'll sell them for because I have no clue where they come from or what they do. But if for some reason, somebody who knows about these things can come forward and leave a comment down below about that. Just seriously, these are, these are gems in my collection. And I, I really hope there's not a, another one because I don't know what other thing they could have but that's all I've got for you. And I say that I have two blasters you've probably never heard of before, but I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. Oh man, check this out. I'm gonna do a thing that I should, like everybody should do in regards to nominating blasters for tag back. I'm gonna go to my literal YouTube channel. I'm gonna hit the little magnifying glass and I'm gonna type in tag back. Have I done a video? No. No, I have not done a video on this blaster. Super. Eh, 
they just accidentally stooped on the books. We preserve bookses around here because they, they tell a story that is often not told when it comes to toys, and that's why we try to preserve them the best we can. Thank you very much for this one, Zach, because this is a very important public service announcement on Tag Back, the show where we take a look at blasters from the past to see what the conference today, the present, and this time. You would not believe how many times I've been asked, hey, welcome. Can you ID this blaster for me? I, I, I'm not the only one. I'm sure everybody in this ecosystem and every single search and every community has asked, what is this blaster? I have the box. I can definitely tell you that it's called the Nerf Dart Tag Strike Fire. Strike Fire. It's not on the blaster, but it's called the Strike Fire. This thing is called the Strike Fire. This thing. Strike fire. This one. Strike fire. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the coolest things that uh, Nerf has ever made when it comes to blasters from 2005, but I'm looking on the wiki and apparently this thing's also known as the crossfire. I It just says dark tag blaster. Where does the name crossfire come from? This one says 2006. The wiki says 2005. It just says two dark tag blasters. I, okay, anyway, the whole point is this thing's cool. It's super rad. It's tiny. It's not exactly ergonomic. If you don't have the right hands, this thing's not going to help you, but feels good to me, and it has a two-finger trigger, which is a rarity in the Nerf ecosystem. It used to shoot those oversized tagger darts that would stick kind of sometimes the Velcro vests that you'd wear that came with the set, but it will hold five whole dirts inside of this cylinder on the front of it, kind of like so. And then of course it's a front loader. You kind of put that in there like that and then pull that back, let it fly and tactical. Man, that shot actually surprisingly well. I'm, I'm fairly certain these things are reverse. I actually don't know. I, I'm certain I've tried to open one of these and make it good in the past, but that's the strike fire for you. It's a weird blaster that gets weirder when you look at the top of it because this blaster, oh, this blaster. I need a thing that I've already looked at on tag back that has a rail. The double breach, the strike fire. You, come on, just try to, try to be a... How about you? You wanna clamp to a thing of the... Bruh. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, you're on there pretty good, aren't you? So now, to prime the blaster, just imagine this thing had like a, like a spot for a foregrip, but you wanna be like super tactical and have your underslung Nerf double breach. Yeah, that's the hidden thing of the strike fire, or I guess the crossfire. Almost lost my oopy juice. This thing has a reverse nerf and strike rail attachment, and it was uh, kind of a thing that you were meant to mount on other blasters, I guess, or that you could. How many actual dart tag blasters had nerf attachment rails? I know like the final dart tag blasters all had really cool shells that didn't have rails, but, and that's where the strike fire would have came in, in three delicious flavors, and, I mean, let's just be frank. The only reason I'm talking about this because I'm tired of getting comments about like, what's this blaster? Walk on, I found a super rare blaster. What is it? It's the strike fire. Is it worth using today? Well, it's not terrible, but it's not good. And you can kind of do whatever you want with that one. It is technically a nerf attachment, which is weird. I, it's, it's honestly, like this is one of the first blasters that I really fell in love with because it fit me like a glove. It looks cool and it's, got a slide on it instead of like a T-pole or anything like that. It's like, ha ha. Yeah, and it just feels amazing. So I can see a lot of love with this thing. And yeah, sure, you can rebarrel it and put a better spring in and utilize all that much of drawn airflow. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't search these things out, but good news is I have like 40 of them. So I'm sure there's quite a few of them still out there, unless I got the entire stock of them somehow over the years and all the collections and thrifting and everything I've done. But it's called the Strike Fire. I guess also the Crossfire. I'm going with Strike Fire because the box says Strike Fire. Um, 
Maybe there was another box called the Crossfire. I don't know anymore. It's kind of shaking my faith, but it's a single shot pistol with dart storage and yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. That, that's that's everything though. That's, that's about all I can say. That's all I've got for you. I'm Walk Up on 7. Thank you very much for watching this video. Chances are if you got to the end. Welcome to Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it can offer us today in the present. And this time, I am i don't know how I'm going to milk this one for watch time, although it's a rather interesting blaster from Busby, circa 2007. The Mega Missile. Yes, that's actually how big it is. That's what she said! You know, I've actually never seen this blaster before, and I found it in the box in the impressive collection here in the iceberg, and I, I love it. I absolutely, you want to talk about having missiles in HVZ? Boy, it doesn't get much better than this. The Mega Missile Circa 2007 from Busby is an air blaster with apparently a air tank that is comparable to the ultimate missile blast, a very sought after blaster for its surprisingly big air tank. I'm not gonna take this thing apart because for all I know, this is the last one available in the world anywhere, but it's the Mega Missile. And the best part is pulling this thing out of a box, it actually works. And yes, that is the actual draw of the pump on the Mega Missile. I'm not even, this is not a primary weapon in any sense of your imagination. But if you had one and you were playing HVZ, you're gonna freaking love it for how small it is with an included pump. I, I have to pump this thing on camera, man. It's like, it's gonna be a, I'm gonna be made fun of, kicked out of the playground. So I don't have one of the uh, Buzz B missiles handy, but thankfully Nerf copied them completely with their demolisher rockets. So, uh. yeah. I actually don't know how many pumps this thing takes, so. All right. Well, it's probably pumped. And now we pull the trigger and fire our demo rocket. That was not super impressive. However, functional. Yeah, I'm like trying to hold it up to light. I don't feel like this thing has a very big air tank, but what does it matter? It shoots a rocket and somebody somewhere in some HVZ game, human versus zombie, as if you didn't know, usually have zombies that can only be tagged out by things that aren't like typical nerf ammo, like elite darts, short darts, rival rounds, hyper rounds, stuff like that. They usually require something special and hard to use. Sure, some adversary zombie types will require you to use mega darts. However, there's always gonna be one that requires rockets in some fashion and you don't wanna be that person that has no answer for when the rocket zombies start coming. But the zombies are never gonna expect your 2007 Busby mega missile. I, I mean, technically it's functional and technically I'm trying to milk this video for as much watch time as ever. So does it fire? Actually, it might actually fire mega XL. Just gotta, just gotta make sure it's sealed on there. That was technically the Mega Missile firing, firing Mega XL. That's just cool. I liked old Busby. Busby was a lot better. We need more things like this, Busby. I, I don't know what you're doing now, but th this is awesome. I, I would buy more of these. I want one in box. I wonder if I can find one in box. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. I can't really milk this video for more than that. So thank you very much for watching. <laughs>
Yeah, how has this channel gone on for so long and not talked about the Lenard triple shot? I think you can actually still find these blasters in a plethora of different colors and sizes. And there's even one that's like just singled. It's like the same blaster, but it's just singled. That fires like the big bullet or something like that. But the triple shot is notorious for the fact that, well, it's a shotgun. It's like a stock shotgun from Lenard in a dart shooter, but this was uh, back in the day, back when like modding blasters and stuff was kind of becoming more of a thing because of HVZ being more of a thing. And the Lennard triple shot has a massive plunger tube, like, like a huge plunger, like a long shot sized plunger tube and a blaster that typically wasn't very expensive and was pump action. And technically if you were to like drill holes out and single each of the three shot things, because it's, it's only four shots, it's three shots of four, into four long boy barrels with spring upgrades and everything like that, because the catch in this thing is like some kind of ratcheting thing that works really well and is like super good till it breaks anyway, which I'm sure it could take some good amount of spring upgrade before that happens, and basically get like a rear loading high FPS blaster that's pump action and something that's this big. I mean, that's kind of the legacy. There was a stock that goes on the end here, but it's not very comfortable because it kind of connects right here. And if you know, like you'd be, yeah, it's, it's like a thumb hole stock that doesn't work, but it held a couple of darts. But I'm more interested in the fact that this thing is a stock three shot shotgun and the results may surprise you. However, I gotta come clean. I wouldn't be doing this video right now had it not been for Lucha Thor because I have a couple of these blasters, okay? And none of them would fire a dart. They're all not, I mean, they're pretty old. They've been banging around and stuff like that. They, they just wouldn't fire darts. They had bad seals and stuff like that, or I have two or three of them that are locked up and won't fire at all. So this one has been modified, but it's just the dart posts were removed. So it had better dart compatibility. And also I re-lubed everything to make sure it had an air seal. The spring and everything else is entirely stock. And again, the performance is going to surprise you because I'm trying to stall for time while I load this stupid thing up. It's surprisingly good. In fact, this thing might actually put like a stock sledge fire to shame. I know the sledge fire didn't have the greatest performance when it first came out. Give her, give her dirts a pat down here. You're good dirts, but pump this thing forward and you got that ratcheting mechanism. Springs back forward because it has a return spring and... Okay, well, one of those darts didn't do too good, but the rest of them, pretty awesome. And then of course you just pump it back and it switches to three more darts. And it fires those pretty good. Again, it's kind of hit and miss right now, but I mean, these things were always singled and turned into awesome single shot shooters with four shots that you could easily rear load. This thing was an HVZ nerf staple. Up there with the long shot, because remember long shots were kind of hard to modify. This was cheaper and a heck of a lot more accessible. Triple shot, it came in every color under the sun. It has a legacy all of its own. It is a super special blaster that I've never held a modified one. And honestly, I need something that's like a good rear loading, high performance Springer. and. One of the triple shots I own may be that blaster. In fact, this thing was such an HVC staple that when they actually made humans versus zombies blasters, like officially licensed from the name that I guess somebody made a company out of, that's how everybody got the bandanas and stuff. I bet, I, I know Mike's school did do HVZ, but it was no blasters, which was really dumb. I, I hated the fact they didn't do blasters and it was kind of a really poorly ran game. Just on par for the college I went to, unfortunately, but this was one of the things that they rebranded into that. And I don't know when the original triple shot came out. I, I've, I've checked like four or five different Wikipedias at this point and I can't find the answer to that, but they've been around for a while and they're absolutely awesome. So if you do find one, take care of it. But this is one of the ones that if you do find it, you can still make it good. Getting one of these boys to hit hard, like 150 FPS isn't even that difficult. It has the power to do it. So this is one of the first times I've talked about a blaster and tag back that it's actually still really good. I'm pretty happy about that, but that's all I've got for you. Full adored triple shot.
What I'm about to show you on Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past, see what it could offer us today in the present, is the first Nerf blaster that I remember having. This is the first one that I have any memory and any recollection of ever having in any toy chest. It's kind of a special one for me. I mean, obviously, there may have been others before it. I was born in 1990. This is the 1997 Nerf Supermax 1500. And it says 1997 on the wiki, and this one does say 1997 on the grip, but this, I know for a fact, this is the one, and it had that new school, newer anyway, Nerf logo. So, I'm, it's a Supermax blaster. You like those, right? So of course, Supermax 1500. Young Walcom had one of these things. I probably got it from an aunt or uncle or something for Christmas. I know for a fact I never got more darts for it. And by the time I probably would have got more darts for it, there were far more important things for me to waste my money on, like Pokemon cards and Zoid models and action figures. So yeah, but that didn't mean I didn't have fun with it because this was my sidearm. This was the thing that I'd run around the neighborhood using. It had a, a thing right here that I could hit stuff with like a lightsaber. I, I loved it. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. This is like one of the first times I've held one of these things in a while and a lot of memories of running through the woods and messing around with this thing is coming back to me. So I don't remember what dart it actually takes, but thanks to Zach, I have a whole bag here of like, I think these are called micro darts. They're, they're not your standard nerf darts. I'm almost certain that is not the dirt this thing shoots. Is it old school Mega? Like, I, I swear this thing did not survive past, like, Christmas morning. All the darts were gone. I'm sure the dog ate all of them. Wiki, don't let me down now. Uh, it's Supermax darts. Oh, no. Uh, I only have one thing that may have... Supermax darts in it. Oh, extra tag back. Not really. Uh, I've already covered this. Oh my god, they're still on the blaster. These things are. That's an expensive boy with expensive boy darts. Oh. Have we not talked about the Supermax 5000? I mean, we've talked about some other Supermax versions of it. There's there's a lot with that name on it. But yeah, these are these are Supermax darts. There's a, I have literally four of them in the entirety of the iceberg. Oh, can't lose these. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the dirt it took. Oh, oh, that's soft. It just have, have the perfect amount to actually use the blaster. All right. I love the grip on this thing. It's got this weird texture to it. And it looks, it looks cool, man. Like it's also air powered, which back in the day, was like air powered sucks because you have to pump it. And who wants to do that? And it wasn't until much later I realized air power is the best because you can plug overpressure release valves and get a ton of power out of them. But, man, do you even rotate anymore? Can you, can you please fire the dirt? <gasps> Holy s That was powerful. Okay, so it doesn't rotate automatically. Maybe it just never did. Hey. Not bad for a blaster from God knows how old, but funny thing about this blaster is it's been re-released a couple of times, but I don't really like the redone version of it. This is the new release of the Supermax 1500. Uh, this one was 2001, I think. You can see the family resemblance. This uh, is practically the same thing. The main differences are it has, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is the same exact blaster. Find that one. And it does not automatically rotate the turret, but it's the same thing. It's an air blaster, which means if you wanted to make one of these good in 2021 or beyond, you definitely could, because Air power is nothing to be trifled with. It is 
one of the best ways to make a foam dirt to go fur. And I think it's cool that they brought this design back with little dart holders in the rear. I mean, maybe this one had dart holders at one point. I don't know, but yeah, both of them. I like having all of the lineage, although that maybe there's more colors and stuff, but I like having a complete set when it comes to tag pack and I can show what both of them are. God, I hope I can find those darts later because those are, those are going to be rare and expensive and hopefully I don't ever need to fire super max darts again. Whew. That's all I've got for you. I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. Welcome to Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blast from the past and see what it can offer us today in the present and this time. It's one of those things that isn't really that old, but at the same time, not a whole lot of people are going to talk about it. And if you find it, it's most likely not going to have the thing that's required to make it actually work. So it's an oddity and I'm going to talk about it from Busby back when they were awesome. It's the Busby uh, auto Motorized Auto Tech 20. Twenty thirteen, a futuristic year for a future. I say futuristic. This thing kind of looks uh, a little normal, but it is a flywheel blaster. And if you know anything about Busby, you know they've been doing flywheel blasters pretty much longer than anyone. And if I can stop stalling for time and open up this battery door, I can tell you how many batteries it takes to function. Ah, now one takes three. Two. Oh my god, these are looking pretty corroded. All right. I think I only have one of these things. It does come in two colors. There's a yellow and a black, and there's a green and black. And everybody start hoping and praying that this thing will fire up as I put its power source within it. Come on. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> that would have been a really short video. Where the heck did the back cover go? Robin, bring me the bat cover. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Ah, Batman, like when we get to the bat cave, could I get a little snack? Yes, Shaggy, we'll all have a snack. Bat milk and cookies for everyone. Bat milk? It's gonna hammer you back on there for right now. It's the automate, the Motoraz Auto Tech 20. So this thing right here, it actually looks a lot like the Busby Destiny clip now that I think about it. It almost uh, looks like it'll work in the same way, but it's a 20 dart clip in a time where pretty much everybody was using magazines, but Busby, they only used magazines for things that ejected shells. And later on when they made magazines that were basically clones of the Nerf ones. But a whole 20 drats? Yeah, that's actually not too bad, especially for something that you would hope would be pretty quick and easy to refill. Now, most, if not all, flywheel blasters typically are magazine fed, or they use a rotating turret. There's not a whole lot in between there, which is a shame because flywheels kind of open you up to do all sorts of weird, crazy things. But this is a clip and 20 dollar clips that are that big. I mean, there's some reasoning to use something like that, except for the fact that all your dirts are sticking out the front. So they're all going to get damaged. This is a Busby blaster. So I'm a little dubious in what the actual performance is like. Only the best for you because I already have these all in a container, but uh, Mengen's check. Auto Tech 20, Ch oh no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna feed my men guns. I gotta have actual Busby darts. I'd screw this. I came prepared. So you just lost like a billion points, but don't worry. I have a, I have some food that I think you will actually eat. They're called Zuru X-Shot darts and they're slightly shorter than the standard Nerf dart. Means I gotta load this thing all over again. So come on board and bring along all your hopes and dreams. Together we will find everything that we're looking for. There's always room for you if you want to be my friend. We are, we are on a cruise. We are. Ah, I defeated your... You know, it doesn't really have a mechanism like stop the mag from like... It does and it don't. Imagine being like super tactical. Like imagine you're, you got my vision and it's not covered by the shadow of the thing. You're like super tactical reload and like you could definitely overdo that, but it's, it's not that bad, I guess. Let's see. 
It's a two-stage trigger, no rev triggers here. Pull it slowly to start it revving and pull it all the way for it to fire. For three double A's, that's about what I'd expect. Look, man, I, I, it's, it's probably fine. I don't have actual Busby dirt. I mean, I do, but they'd be such a pain in the butt to find right now. I got Busby shells, but I don't got the Busby dirts. It probably fires okay. I, I think that was funnier than it actually firing. It's a flywheel blaster. It would need a new cage and everything to be operational. Could you technically make it magazine fed? Of course you could. I like the mechanism it has going on, but really the mechanism is just a pusher that when it pushes forward, makes a little notch move up, which indexes the clip up. And then of course you're stuck with a clip sticking out of the top of your blaster, which uh... I guess it's not that bad. Can it... You know, okay, if you try, you can get it to fall out, but I'm pretty impressed with this thing, except for the fact that it came out after the Strife and definitely after the Raven. So I can see why this thing is, uh, it's a thing. It's one of those Busby oddities. This was before Busby really figured out what was going on. It's kind of hilarious, but hey, if you got a small chilled and you want to make sure that they can have some foam dart fun without the power of, I don't know, Nerf and Strike Elite, this was an option in 2013. Should y'all look for one nowadays? No, not really. Should you ever pick one up if you see it? Yeah, for a good price. This one was picked up for eight bucks and that might be a little bit much. I think this was also picked up by my friend Jack Smay or Zach. So thank you to whoever got this to me and thank you to you for watching this video. Chances are we got to the end. You It's time for Tag Bat, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past, yeah, to figure out what it could offer us in the present. I actually forgot the words to my own opening on my own series right now, which is, I'm sure is great, because we're going pretty far back in the past for this one. This is one of the coolest blasters with one of the coolest names from original Nerf, back when it used to be nothing but foam arrows and balls. <laughs> Eight times more power. Eight times more ammo. Eight times more trouble. Nerf Master Blaster Double Barrel Pump Action Power. One Kenner products. That's probably a 1992 blaster. This is the Master Blaster. There was the Blast of Ball, then there was the Blastomatic, which I do have a Blastomatic somewhere. I just don't know where it is right now. But you take pretty much two Blastomatics and then you make them kind of like opposite world on it, and you get the Master Blaster. And this thing was the pinnacle of ball shooters. And it might remind you of another blaster we've talked about. And that's because this thing is essentially a pulsator from years before the Pulsator was a thing. Actual like steel rod too. And I'm surprised that a blaster this old still functions. And how do I know it functions? Because I found enough ammo to fill up the Master Blaster. It actually takes a whole colossal eight Nerf balls, like the original ones and not the slightly bigger ones or the slightly smaller ones. Why is there so many different shapes of Nerf balls? which means throughout the course of this entire series, I have went from like three to two to eight Nerf balls. Fill it up, you just literally pop them in there. It is friction fit and it is a HAMP or high air pressure manual pump. Difference is pump it forward, fires a ball from one of the barrels. Pull it back, fires a ball from the other barrel. It's really freaking cool. Allow me to demonstrate. Forward, back, forward, back. Rapid fire. Oh, I F something. Is this that one that has like the little divot in it? Come on, brah. You worked before. 
just just gotta give it a nice a nice hefty tug. That kind of firepower in a blaster that's uh surprisingly like holsterable. Like you could have this thing, like it's a little big, but you could have this somewhere on your waist in a scabbard or something like that, and you'd have to be very careful drawing it because that fires it. But if you could keep it somewhere, just kind of whip it out and just rattle off shots with it if you're Game mode allows you to use balls. That's surprisingly an effective tool. For being, you know, like three decades old, I'm surprised that this thing still functions as well as it does. I mean, nobody's been in here. The screws are slightly rusted. The labels are starting to come off, but this thing was built like a tank with an actual like steel rod going through it. And decent plastic and I assume some pretty decent O-rings and stuff in there to keep an air seal this many years later. However, not a whole lot of modification to go on here. It's, it's just a, it's a hamp. You just kind of pull it and tug it and push it and it fires a bull. And that's about the best you'd expect from something like this. But it does have one of the cooler names in the entirety of the hobby, the Master Blaster. There is another Master Blaster that I will take a look at, but it's something that needs kind of a special video because it's part of the whole ecosystem, but it does fire foam but it's not a Nerf blaster. A few of you should know who that is. That's gonna be something I'm gonna look at in the future, but the Nerf 1991 or two Master Blaster. Actually really cool. This one, I it's not as cool as like the Pulsator, but I think it's more war worthy than the Pulsator, if that makes sense. It's just something that's a timeless design, and I could totally see somebody, if they really wanted to lose a lot of money and vintage nerf balls out on the field, rocking something like this in an HVZ era war, because it's quick to reload, and it's surprisingly effective and fast to fire. That's all I've got for you on this episode of Tag Back. If you want to check out the rest of them, because... It's time for Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it can offer us in the present. And it's starting off once again with Walcom throwing batteries. Really? Into an exceptionally old blaster that probably doesn't work. Oh, wait, no, we got signal. That probably works. I really kind of hope so. And also, it's one another it's another one of those where you probably have the blaster or you have seen it, but you definitely haven't seen one of these. Or if you've seen one of these and you didn't grab it, or if you have one and didn't know what it could it goes to this. The Nerf Max Force Electric Eel. These things are really rare. Virtual try reality with Nerf. Leave everyone else in the dark with new Nerf Max Force Electric Eel, which glow in the dark dark, slamming a four dark clip and striking a flash. Now your opponents are looking a little green. The electric eel. Nerf for nothing. Releasing in space year of 1997 for a whole 25 ducats. The electric eel is a battery fed blaster. That's also just a... Uh, just a night finder, although it came out before the night finder. I'm looking at this thing. It's got like tri-wing screws like you'd find on like Nintendo cartridges. They really did not want you to get in this thing, but we will power on the beast. And I really hope this does what it's supposed to. Oh my God, it does. That's the electric of the electric eel. You can see it. I know you can see it. It's going to be really hard with like the cameras, uh, like, you know, frame rate and stuff like that. But this is... The electric eel comes with a Ford art clip and good luck finding more of these. And if that wasn't bad enough, it shoots the old school mega dirts, which I really only have like two or three sitting right here. These things are kind of rare. I need to get more of them at some point, but the only other ones I have are in package and you know, I'm a collector. And these are supposed to be like glow in the dark dirts. Glow in the dirt mega dirts are probably the rarest thing that you could get your hands on, but they were a thing that exists. You just kind of put your clip in there. The electric eel eats it. Om, 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 om. Prime it back with that short draw night finder style. And then when you pull the trigger, it flashes a light bulb in there and then shoots a dirt. Um, maybe I didn't have the clip all the way in. Is it, is it indexing? <gasps> there we go. We're ready. Fire! Now, why didn't you fire my dirts? I know you, you could fire my dirts. Fire! 
Yeah, it's about what I expect from 1997. Fire! And yeah, that's a that's a very bright light that would have charged your. I mean, that's one way of doing it. They didn't really have LEDs a whole lot back then, so. That's kind of cool. And again, these clips are stupidly expensive. And did you know that Nerf used to make blasters that were shaped like sea creatures? Grip is pretty awful. It's, as, as you can tell, it's a it's a sea creature. I guess that could technically work as a front grip. Doesn't have any rails or anything on it. These big, huge cheeks on the thing are literally just meant to house the internals for the one light bulb that flashes. There's actually a reflector on the other side to reflect that light again, I suppose, to charge those darts. And the draw is not very much at all, but it does have a nice on off switch and a red LED up at the top that lets you know when it's ready to go. Another one of those blasters you'd probably never see fired unless you had one of these, which you're never gonna find this with this unless you're buying it from a collector. So I'm happy to be able to show it off today for tag back. And of course there's a whole playlist of tag backs that you can check in the, in the corner. Two thousand seven Bubsy or Busby. This nightmare is not over yet, is it? Man, if there's one thing that I know a lot of you out there like, it's Warhammer. More specifically, Warhammer 40k, and more specific than that, the Bolter. I present to you a Nerf Bolter or a, a Busby Bolter, circa two thousand seven. Do, do people not know this thing exists? Because like. I know you guys want bolters, and I don't see this talked about a whole lot. Wow, that's a grip you can actually grab. <laughs> Welcome to Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blast for the past and see what it offers today, the present. And this time. It's the Busby Clip Tech, circa 2007. The funniest part about this is I actually have one of these in box. Oh my God, get on the floor. The perfect tag back. I have one in the box and I have two on the table and I know I have a third one somewhere, but I can't find it. But I do have all the colors of the clip tech. This is the re-release and they re-released this thing, I think like literally until like 2012 or 2013, but it's the clip tech. It's the Busby clip tech in the Air Warriors or Rough Riders line. Clip fed dart blasting. It's a magazine. As you have already written in the comment section, I've literally had hundreds of comments on videos where I go like, and it includes two clips. Well, they're magazines. They will literally pause the video before I call them magazines. And be like, well, come I'm unsubscribing. And I'm gonna come to your house and punch you in the mouth because you said clip instead of magazine. And I played Call of Duty and I know that they're supposed to be magazines. It's awful, man. Like don't, don't do YouTube at all. It comes with six shells, six darts, clip holds six foam darts and shells. Got a pump handle or a slide, a trigger. It's got an excited kid, got a burl and all the instructions and all that stuff. And it shows the rogue, the hunter, the double shot, the hawk and the automatic Tommy 20. The hawk is the one that I have one of, but it's in box. And I don't want to open it and I'm not going to open up this one. So let's hope for the ones I have on the table work. Hey, look. It's a different one. Let's see if you, uh... Oh, that's, that's chonksy right there. Ugh. Ugh. And of course, this thing uses Bubsy shells. However, I'm running low on fricks to give about Busby shells and sticky darts. So I'm hoping these Zuru X-Shot darts work. God, please work because I don't want to go dig through bins to find suction cart darts. You load our shells. The shells are the things that have air restrictors in them. So if you want to mod this thing, you have to mod the shells, all of them. And then we load them into our magazine like a real nerf. Mag holds six. It looks like if it really wants to, it could hold a seventh, but I'm not going to push it. We put our mag in there. Is that not far enough? Oh, 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 wow, that was, that was violent. If this is about as close to analog as you get for a, a fur arm in, in, in the Nerf ecosystem, please fire. Hey, and then of course it has to get that shell out of the way. That, that did not get the shell out of the way. Oh no. <laughs> Don't mess up my dirt. It's old man. This is like how people are like, well, what's the velocity with the, with the chronographs, like, bruh, this is why we don't, because they're so old. Like, I, I can't vouch for how this thing would have fired back then. 
let alone years later when it's been probably everywhere. Eject! Ah, oh, you, you kind of tried. Let's, uh... Let's try the other one. Now I'm gonna make the bold assumption that back in the day, this thing worked fine. That one has a piece of plastic rattling around inside of it. Now that I think about it, I don't know exactly how. It's like supposed to spring the shell back and just knock it loose or something? There's, there's no, there's no rim for the instructor to like grab. I ain't opening up the brand new one. And you're just gonna have to use your imagination if this doesn't work, but chamber fired pretty well. Didn't eject. Um, oh no, now we're like, oh. Yeah, it's supposed to pop this, maybe we gotta do it slow. Chamber. That was cool. Yeah, you just do it kind of slow. That was less cool. That's eh, kind of neat. Oh yeah, it's got a little spring-loaded piece in the barrel that pops the shell back and it's got a little a deflector in there that pops out the side. But it looks like a bolter. That's that's probably the most important thing. But it does have a reasonably comfortable grip, a big, huge, chunky slide, a foregrip if you need it, a mag release. It takes these mags, which are pretty hit and miss depending on if you uh, have them or not, because not a whole lot of blasters used them, although they really tried with those shells. And yeah, obviously this thing offers us absolutely nothing in terms of performance nowadays. You can modify shells, you get brass shells, you can put a better spring and stuff in here. It's not gonna be worth your time at all unless you really wanna have a pretty decent performing shell ejecting bolter. That's the 2007 Busby Clip Tech. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. I am Walcott by Seven. Thank you very much for watching this video. Chess are if you got to the end, you like what? All right, uh, this one kind of sucks because one, it cost me a lot of money in batteries. Two, they're not exactly super great blasters, although they are unreasonably comfortable. Three, I swear to you, I have like 14 of these things. Every time I open up a box, I find two or three more and I've got three of them on the table. Hopefully two of them work. We need two of them to work in this case. And four, I'm worried about activating some kind of Soviet era protocol of deleting me off the face of the planet because these things are old and they have not been activated in years and they deal with radio waves. But this is Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blast from the past, see what it offers today in the present. And this time, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be a really funny video if these things work. It's the 1997 Cyber Strike Gear Comlink 2 Recon. It's a walkie-talkie built into a Nerf blaster. I, this is a thing that exists. Bored with virtual? Try reality with Nerf! Comlink 2, a cool set of two combination blaster walkie-talkies. Stay left! Got him. With Comlink, we're totally connected. Now, now. The other kids are unprotected. Comlink 2, Nerf or nothing. So this is a video that I was all like super gung-ho and doing, and then I realized like speakers and all that stuff are gonna cause problems, maybe with the microphones that I already have here, and nine volt batteries. Can't say I miss them. And four nine volt batteries was 15 bucks. Hit that like button for me, will ya? Maybe leave a comment, rip in my wallet, cause uh, that's, that's actual American currency wasted on these things. Although, again, unreasonably comfortable grip for me. Testing. We got signal. So there's one. Now we're gonna grab the other one. That's nice. What darts do these fire? Oh God, these don't fire old school mega. They might, oh no. So I do want to note that Busby in like, I don't know, 2015 or something like that, did a blaster suspiciously similar to this one. I, this was like the only one they ever did. And I, I do have them. They, funny enough, they still hold battery power. They still technically work. But these things are older. And I can't believe that they 
work as good as they do. So you can probably tell antenna. This does, I believe, talky something. That might do a call. That's volume, that's your speaker. This is your priming handle. It's a very comfortable one. Standard Night Finder style prime. And the grip is awkward, but fits me like a glove. Uh, maybe if I were to, yeah, yeah, maybe that's a little bit better. It is really, really nice. But can these things talk to each other? Or are they like the same one on the same frequency? I, I wonder how many of these you can get on one thing. Testing. 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 Okay, this one actually works. The other one doesn't. Yeah, so imagine that I recorded the rest of the video on the Comlink 2 instead of on an actual, like, Rode microphone that costs 200 something dollars. That would be great. I also don't even know if you can actually hear me or it's just garbled and gook, but I'll press the call button a couple times to make sure. I wish I knew something like uh, Morse code. Well, now that the mothership knows where I live, I might as well have some fun with my foam dirt blaster. So, oh man, these things shoot old school mega. Front loads, primes, backs, fires as well as you'd expect it to. It's actually got a belt clip on the side and dart storage on the other side. And I mean, this is, this is a neat idea, especially for the late nineties, you know, like, Nowadays, yeah, sure, you can put a better barrel and a stiffer spring, and I mean, it's not that big of a plunger tube, judging by the thickness and the length of the draw, but it's not a bad blaster. Would you want to use it? Of course not, but it would be funny and thematic to use it. I don't know what the range of these things are, but if you had these during an HVZ, I think that would be a lot of fun, although you definitely have to rebarrel it for something. It's the grip that always gets me with the Calm Links, because they just fit me perfectly <laughs> that's so silly but how expensive 30 ducats back then that is not cheap but i mean hey when was the last time somebody activated two nerf cyber strike gear com link twos right that's that, that puts a warm 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 spot in my heart thankfully nothing bad has happened yet. But that's all I've got for you. I'm all comma seven. Thank you very much for watching this video. Chances are we got to the end of you like what Ah, this is gonna be one of those good and quick episodes of Tag Back where I just happen to look through a box and find a blaster that I didn't even know I owned it yet. I think I've held one somewhere in the past and forgot just how lovely it is. Because what do you get when you cross an FMP90 and a Nerf and Strike Long Strike. And now, with the magic of my polymerization card, apparently you get the Dart Zone Quick Fire Sniper. So seriously, I literally just found this randomly in a box. And up, as far as I can tell, it's completely complete. It even has the freaking magazine. None of the darts, and it looks like it takes some kind of crazy ones, but I have tested it just before this video, shooting X-Shot darts, and it happened to work. But again, we don't really cover any kind of performance claims in Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past, see what it can offer us today in the present. Because this time, it's all about the blaster itself, and since they're usually old or thrifted or broken, it's kind of hard to be like, yes, this thing shoots 100 FPS, when yours will probably vary. In fact, this thing could be modded, for all I know. I know I got a lot of questions about people asking, like, where's the performance chronograph numbers? And I just don't have them, because it kind of seems like a moot point. But yes, it's a P90 that's crossed with a Nerf Long Strike. Except for this one, you could very easily remove that whole thing right there. And we can take off the barrel. And if we really want to, we could take this off. And I'm not even joking about the P90 claims because this thing on the top looks like a P90 style magazine. And the grips and everything, they're so comfortable. I swear I've held one of these things in the past, but this is, so, it looks weird, but it's so freaking 
comfortable. And it uses uh, whatever kind of mag this is. It's got a really weird, like shortened, like dart body with like a slimmer head. I, I can't even tell if it's actually a slimmer head because these lips on the side, I don't even know. But it does seem to fit X-Shot darts, at least one of them at a time. And I should mention that apparently this blaster, which came out in 2011, had a sibling blaster that came out later that was virtually the same thing, except for it had a single shot loading thing on the side of it, if you happen to like that, which I do, and I hope to get one of those. It's called the Destroyer XL, I believe, with the barrel back on it. It does have some kind of rail right here, but I, I don't know what fits on that rail. It's got a rail up here at the top, and then it's got this weird sight, which, as far as I can tell, works perfectly. It's actually got a piece of plastic in there for a reticle. Fits on like that to give it that P90 aesthetic. And then we've got the stock, which might hold a magazine. I'll have to test that, because there's indentations on the sides of it. Just snaps into place, bolt action, pull it back, push it forward, and hopefully this fires. It does, pretty lethargically. Let's see if it will fire a sec. Ooh, that felt kind of crunchy. And it was indeed pretty crunchy. A little worried about that. Oh wait, no, it did try to chamber the dart. Try that again. There we go. Yeah, not a whole lot in the way of performance, but the ergonomics on this thing are freaking fantastic. And it looks amazing. I'm kind of bummed I don't have a Destroyer XL. This thing was hard enough to figure out what it was because I actually went to like the Nerf wiki and looked through all the things Dart Zone has literally ever released. It's, it says 2011 Primetime Toys on the side of it and this wasn't listed. It was like another Nerf wiki that had this exact blaster. I literally typed in Dart Zone Sniper and found this one. As for what it's good for, I mean, I don't really think a whole lot to be perfectly honest. It looks cool and you could probably shove custom internals in it, but I highly doubt this thing's gonna give you a whole lot for your money, especially when it comes to these weird proprietary clips that, oh, oh, it might actually hold. Maybe the other way? Well, if it does, I can't seem to get it, but, but I mean, it, it's super cool. It, it looks awesome. It feels great. If anything, I wanna see this grip cloned onto other blasters, because this is, this is just about perfect. And if you ever find one, chances are it's never gonna have the in, like extra bits, which is why I'm so flabbergasted that this thing had apparently all of the parts. Although it looks like it could use a bipod and maybe a couple of other pieces. I don't know. This, this, this is one I just like found it and I have to talk about it. Look at it. It's a Dirt Zone Snipper. But that's all I've got for you. I'm Allcoming7. Thank you very much for watching this video. Welcome to Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past and see what it could offer us today in the present. And this time, it's not gonna offer us a whole lot of the present, but it did make me wonder, what was the last officially released Nerf blaster that shot an old school Mega Dart? Seriously, how late do you think that is? Because I was surprised to find out it was 2007. In fact, I feel like there was a huge gap in between the last blaster that used it and this one. This was after N-Strike actually came out. We actually had things like the long shot already on shelves when these blasters existed. Although I think they were made for uh, a much younger type of nerfer. Cause I've got a truck. Unfortunately, I don't think it hits like a truck. You'll understand in a moment. So this is the Transformers Optimus Prime Blaster. This was actually released to celebrate the release of the Transformer movies from Michael Bay back in, well, 2007. Uh, I remember this because I was working at a pizza place at the time, and it was a big deal to a lot of the people working there. And I mean, Transformers coming back, yeah, I, I could see that being a big deal. I, myself, not a huge Transformers fan. I just never really grew up with them. I did like Transformers Armada though. I remember really, really liking Transformers Armada. So how is a truck a Nerf blaster? And you probably guessed by the name, it transforms. But how does it transform? The coolest 
possible freaking way. You flip this thing out and suddenly your hand has been replaced by Optimus Prime and you've got this gigantic doozy on the end of it. And that's a big boar and big boar means a big dart. And sure enough, these things shot old school mega darts as late as 2007. Simply put your mega dirt in there, prime that back, which feels a little awkward. And the inside of the grip has a button, like a very simple button that acts like the trigger. And it fires a dirt. Not very hard, but again, I, I don't think there were range claims and I don't think this was trying to do anything other than be a transforming dart blaster. Holds back up into a truck and it's even got like movable wheels and stuff like that. You can see the barrel of the blaster right there. It is way, way too cool. Like that is something that I wish more blasters did because that just feels awesome. Imagine having a truck somewhere on your gear, maybe on your lower back or something or on a holster. You just kind of pull it up, and flip it into a blaster and then prime it and fire it or have it already primed and fire mega darts at a zombie or something like that. Not that you want to use old school megas because those are just going to get lost and destroyed. But the fact that it does it is surprising enough. However, this is not, you can see the hand in there, the only blaster released in this line. There was another one. All right, so this one is, oh, I think I have maybe another one that's in better condition. It's uh, it's missing a couple of parts, but this one's Starscream and that's a jet fighter. And this one does the same exact kind of gimmick. Although this one is very, oh God, does it? I swear to you, it worked earlier. Can you? Oh God. We gotta pull up on, ah, there we go. That, that's how we do it. Not, not quite as smooth. It's actually got dart holders on the side of it. Maybe Optimus did as well. Is there anything? No, not at all. And this one actually has two barrels on it. It fires two dirts. I assume one after another. That trigger just, I don't know if this one's even gonna fire. That trigger just locked up really bad. How do you even prime this? Aha! And, uh, I mean, I would, I would like to show this one, but the, the trigger's literally stuck. Or, and by trigger, I mean the button. Yep, well, there was a second one, arguably better. Uh, not nearly as cool when transforming, in my opinion, but it was a jet fighter. It did have two barrels. You primed it like that, and I assume it fired both darts at once or one after another. I hate doing kind of incomplete tag backs like this, but it's either try to shove this into its own video or just deal with the fact that the one I have is kind of dead. There we go. Hey, almost got there. Yeah, you are. Oh, hey, wait, wait. Oh, I can fire it. I spoke too soon. Fire the dirt. Okay, was that both of them or just, I mean, it was just one side and I have to collapse it, bring it back to fire the other one. Two at once. I tried to fire that one. Again, that's what we get for a blaster that's been kicking around for quite some time. I still like the Optimus one more, but let me know which one you think is better down in the comment section below. However, that's all I've got for you for this tag back. I'm Walkama7. Thank you very much for watching this video. Chances are I've got the end. You like what I do here, so please hit like. Tag back is always a reflection of Nerf's past, or a lot of different companies' past, the past of foam flinging. However, there are times where we don't go too far into the past. We are going to be taking a look at a blaster for the past and see what it can offer us today in the present, but this time, it's something that I've never, I don't think, fundamentally covered on the channel. Despite it being a blaster, you would assume I absolutely would love. The Zombie Strike Dominator, circa 2015. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
When this blaster came out, it had a notorious reputation for not working. And I'm no stranger to that on this channel. Uh, one of my most popular videos I've ever done was of course on the Elite 2.0 Warden, a blaster that I was lukewarm for, got excited for when I actually got my hands on it because I figured out it might do something that was really cool and then it snapped on me. So I went out and bought another one, which also broke on me and that was my review. This thing had lots of issues for a lot of different reviewers and I never picked one up, but I have had them over the years and every single time I get my hands on one, I destroyed it for the cylinders because they work in strong arms for drop cylinder mods. So Dubonair is good for something if you find one cheap enough. But this is a kind of blaster that I would absolutely just love the crap out of. Historically, the Quadra Blast from Dart Zone is something I'm, I know I had one and I better still have it because it is a blaster I fully intended to make like as good as possible. This is basically the same thing, but done before that. Again, 2015, and it's a beast of a blaster. Aesthetically, it looks really freaking cool, but most of the time you find these things, you're gonna have thrifted them, and they're gonna be missing the two cylinders on the side and the pump grip, because this pump grip is actually removable, and it can actually twist into either the left or the right side of the blaster. Having it on the bottom is kind of fundamentally flawed because you are gonna hit your hand. So having it on the side like that, pretty freaking rad. No barrel attachment point and no real stock, but it has this weird like thumb hole grip area, which I find rather comfortable. But of course you have to change those cylinders and you do that with this weird double key ring trigger thing. Every time you pull that, just like the Flip Fury, it rotates cylinders. And what got me on doing this video is I remember that never really working. But this one, which could be a later release model, I mean, if I really rail it, it screws up. But that's like every single one just fine. Internally, this thing is a strong arm, which means it practically has no mod potential. And that priming linkage from all the way up here to all the way back here is gonna be flawed, but we can still give it a shot. It has four six start cylinders. Prime it like that, prime it forward, pull the trigger, it fires a dirt. If you hold the trigger down, climb it back, push it forward, it fires a dirt. So you can slam fire through the cylinders. We got four darts left and the flaws of the uh, Doominator start to become more apparent. It skipped a shot for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, you can't slam fire it. That's disappointing and uh, Yeah, that's not something you want to have happen when you're actively trying to use the blaster. I guess I got through that entire cylinder, no problem. And that one, also no problem. That's pretty good. And of course, all right, so it's not flawless, but it's definitely not terrible. It does have a single tactical rail on the top of it. And if you still want to really get one, they are still available in some places for not too badly of a marked up price. But of course, should you? Not really, it's unreliable. Even this one, which I had pretty high hopes for, doesn't work all that well. It's a pretty big blaster and that's, that's not great for something that only has like, what, six times four of, 24 shots, that's not exactly stellar. And of course, it's a normal nerf blaster, so you're gonna be hitting some pretty low velocities and it has virtually no upgrade potential because the internals are essentially a strong arm, which you can't really upgrade the internals on those very much at all. But I got so many comments over the years about people loving this thing, and I can kind of see why, because like it's not as bad, at least this one, as I remember them being, and I could see you fondly loving something like this. It feels really good to use, especially it's like any blaster where I have my hand on a normal like pistol grip and then up here at the front of it like so, like eh, this, this feels really good. But I could already tell you the priming linkage is really bad because the whole front of it is twisting unevenly when I prime it back from there. It's, it's so close to being a good blaster. And the thing that bothers me about Hasbro 
is that they could revisit this entire concept and make it way freaking better. So why haven't they? I know this was probably a sales flop, but you could make it better and make it not a sales flop. I mean, this and like an elite line would have done really good had you fixed the problems, but what I know, you made things like the Ruckus and Elite 2.0 and the Flip series and Man, normally tag back doesn't get depressing, but I've just sucked all the joy out of my own video. The Duominator, not terrible, definitely not good, kind of wish it was better. It's a concept that I think could go far. That's all I've got for you. I'm Walk my 7 Thank you very much for watching this video. Chances are... And here we are, the final day of the month of tag back. The show where we take a look at a blaster from the past and see what it could offer us today in the present. And this time, it's one of the most iconic nerf blasters ever made. It comes from the end strike line and it is a fan favorite pretty much everywhere. This is one of three blasters that I held off doing a video on because I wanted it to be something special. I'm still gonna try to hit that goal with the limited amount of time and mountain power that I have to dedicate to this video but we gotta get it off the wall. I actually purchased this thing off Facebook Marketplace and I've never opened it. So hopefully it's in here. The Nerf and Strike Vulcan EBF 25. One of the biggest and baddest dart blasters to have ever graced this planet. Nerf, the Vulcan EBF 25, the largest full auto Nerf blaster. Up to three darts per second. Felt fed. Rapid fire action. The Nerf Vulcan EBF 25. Each blaster and suction dart sold separately. Batteries not included. Not even joking. I have never opened this thing. There's like, there's plastic wrap in here, like bubble wrap. Oh God. I know it's already been opened, but. What can you say? We are showing the world Ugh. the Vulcan. I mean, I should probably be a little bit more careful with my purchases and actually verify the blaster is in the box. Oh, that even has the little thing right there that covers the firing trigger. So the Vulcan itself is from 2008 in the classic end strike yellow. However, it came in a few different color schemes. You've got the clear Vulcan. You've got the green transparent Vulcan. You've got the red strike Vulcan. This was only sold at Walmart in the US for Black Friday in 2009, making it an exceptionally rare item. And then you've got the variant that was really only seemingly sold overseas, which was known as the Havoc Fire, or the Elite Vulcan. It's not actually Elite Performance, it's just a different color scheme in white. And I really need to get one of those to complete my collection. But this one, oh man, it is freaking beautiful. Still has the stickers in here. And as you might expect from the name, it's a freaking belt-fed LMG in the Nerf ecosystem. Came with a Try. pod. This has been used at a couple of different times. I know the Rhino Fire used this exact same Vulcan Try. pod, and also the Star Wars like First Order Stormtrooper Deluxe Blaster, that kind of emplacement one that was still just a strife with light up and sounds. That also used this exact same Try. pod. It came with a detachable 25 round chain thing. This one's like immaculate condition. Jeez. The chains are, well, chains this one is still loaded with the original whistler darts although i don't think these are the ones this one came with but yep old school nerf whistler darts and you got 25 rounds a common modification was to take off this last green chain which is kind of like the starter chain and replace it with a whole nother 25 round chain and yes they did sell vulcan chain expansion packs even came with a carry handle, which I'm not sure I want to put on the blaster because then I'd have to take it back off and that's gonna be a little bit more trouble than it's worth. And the priming rod, which is very similar to what you found with the long strike and the long shot, snaps into place and it's pretty much a one-way ticket. 
And yes, this thing is a Springer, a fully automatic Springer blaster. You can attach your ammo box on the side. It just kind of clips into place. Looks absolutely menacing and awesome. You can lift this up, sandwich your chain in there. You can actually even reload ammo boxes if you want to have that quick reload. It's got rails all over the place. No end strike barrel attachments or stock attachments because it really doesn't need them. It does have this place right here that features a really nice four grippy kind of area, but rail, 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 but three rails up at the front. It's got sling points on it. If you had to do that, you've got the point down here where you can put your Try. pot on, just kind of clips on with two buttons. And it does pull it out and deploy it. And it's kind of spring loaded in a way and does, and even pivots this thing was just, this is like when Hasbro made stuff that made kids and adults alike squeal with glee. Just look at this thing. It is like with the carry handle and stuff. I don't want to put that on. We have other Vulcans because we're going to shoot these. We're going to shoot the Vulcans. I'm going to load, I'm going to find every single Vulcan chain I have. Hopefully I have a few hundred rounds and we're just gonna end this video firing off every single chain I have from a Vulcan with fresh batteries because I bought fresh D-cell batteries and this thing took six of them because that's what the Vulcan deserves. This was probably the first modded blaster I had ever seen before. It might even be the blaster that got me somewhat interested in Nerf because of Nerf modding. I remember it as a video from I think Mana Energy Potion or Drink or whatever they called themselves way back in the day, there was a video where somebody modified one of these things with like four or five RC car batteries and just made it shoot really, really fast and made extra long chains for them. And that was kind of the legacy that the Vulcan had. I'm almost certain that was one of the first modded Nerf Blasters I've ever laid eyes on. You could upgrade the springs, but because it's motor driven and because of the fire rate, it's like every single time you upgrade a part in this thing, you sacrifice something else. If you upgraded the spring, you would lower your actual rate of fire. Upgrade the motors and everything, but eventually what winds up happening is that if you try to have super long chains on this thing, because 25 rounds honestly isn't a whole lot. Well, if you had a big long chain swinging off the side, you're gonna break the clutch mechanism that indexes the chain and then it's never going to index a chain again. By the way, this is the prototype of the Nerf Vulcan. It was way scaled up and shot far larger Nerf darts, which could have been the inspiration for the modern Nerf Mega Dart. And honestly, the plunger tube in this thing isn't all that big. You couldn't get a lot of performance out of these things, which is why a new common modification for a Vulcan is to slap a flywheel cage in it, which you may have seen with the deplorable that my friend Lance built. That still doesn't really fix the problem with the chains, but man, who cares? At that point, you've got more firepower than you probably really need. It's a niche blaster because chains do serve a purpose. If you can break the chains apart and keep it running almost nonstop, that's one of the ways to have high capacity in an emplacement tool for like HVZ and stuff like that. But you're talking about chains, you're talking about darts, you're talking about automatic springers. There's too many fault points for this thing to reliably work. And that kind of makes it a novelty item at best in our current year. There are other blasters, especially from Dart Zone, I feel that work a heck of a lot better and are flywheeler compared to the Vulcan. But you don't care because it's the Vulcan and everybody loves the Vulcan. It feels and looks amazing. There was a period in time where these things were selling for hundreds of dollars. I see them all the time at thrift stores now. Maybe 50 to $60 for a complete one if you have to have it. Rare variants like the red one here, they can go for a lot more and the Havoc Fire, because they were really only sold on one half of the world and like, like the UK and stuff like that, they can cost a little bit more, but. Ah, uh, it's the Vulcan. You're not using this because you want to win a nerf battle. You're using this to make a statement. And the statement is Vulcan. You want to be Rambo and I'm right there with you because this kind of thing is just universal in the word of badass. Chain fed, massive, imposing, full auto. You gotta love it. And with that, it's time for me to shove the Vulcan back into its box, put it back on the wall where it belongs with all of my other videos, and then grab another Vulcan, fill up every single chain I have, and bring in the new year with a lot of foam daca. 
I'm Walkholm S7. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I know it's been rough. 2021 has not been kind to any of us, but all we can do is look towards the future and try to make it the best possible one we can. And for that, let's just get to some foam flinging.